It's go time in St. Louis. The gateway to the West welcomes round 13 to the Jones Dome. Tomac ran away with the win last week, but Dungy's points domination continues. After Trey Kennard's crushing misfortune, could Tomac be the last man standing to challenge the Diesel? There are two rounds left to zip up the 250 East Championship. Detroit had Muskin seeing red as Justin Bogle blazed past him for the win. 13 points separate these two as they battle in River City. The St. Louis Supercross has a rich history of surprises. Who's going to make this their lucky 13? The George Edward Jones Dome for round 13. Hasn't been very lucky for us so far, folks, but thank you for bearing with us and all you folks that have been waiting to watch the show. 250A qualifying number one's on the track right now. And Jim, we were just talking about those whoops. Yeah, they're Andy, you know, I was surprised to see how tame they were here for St. Louis. I mean, you know, lap times are, you know, in the high uh, to mid 40s. And uh, I mean, part of that is they're just making that section look like it's a straightaway. I mean, everybody is up on top of those whoops. Uh, not only the A, but the B and C groups we saw previously before this. Absolutely. And uh, there's Daniel Hairline just sitting, uh, fixing to finish up his heater lap there, Joey Sabachi. And R.J. Hampshire, he's been really fast the last couple weeks. Had some bad luck last weekend in Detroit. Uh, Davalos got out of control and took him out over the berm. Yeah, and it's unfortunate uh, with Martin Davalos there, uh, you know, having those problems, uh, you know, with him. But, uh, you know, he's had a rough year, Martin Davalos. But, you know, uh, with that being said, it gives R.J. Hampshire, number 80 here, a chance to build on it. You know, he's had some good finishes prior to that, and that's part of racing. And that's that right-hander we see. But as you can see, Marvin Muskin, with a 48-9 right now, his best time, and Bogle right behind him with a 49-2. So just a few ticks off of that, but that section there where you just triple-double into that uh, split, lane. Right, split lane right there, huge for those guys. And Colt Nichols, he's uh, our fifth fastest qualifier right now. I like seeing that. He's been on a really good hot streak with an eighth and a sixth place finish in the last two weeks. But wow, you know, I was stay, paying attention to what's going on in the track here live. Do you see the ruts in the face of that jump there, Jim? Now that's technical. Yeah, not quite as technical as we've seen in Indianapolis a couple weeks ago, but still they're having a lot of pro. We saw the uh, one of the uh, Gully brothers uh, go down in his practice there, but uh, we're getting a chance to see R.J. Hamstar as he goes through the whoops heading into that turn number two right there. R.J. looks good. He's been getting faster every week. You know, he came in had a big crash and was injured and it just it's tough to you have to make a decision if you're injured to sit and heal or try to race through it he raced through it and he's a rookie but rj could be good he could be good for the podium tonight well Here's, the thing about it what i liked about him is we're watching joy savachi now you know rj hamster even though he had that mishap with martin davalos he still finished 11th last weekend where martin davalos 22nd. Yeah, he pulled, Martin pulled off after that. He landed on the concrete on the other side of that berm and took a slam. RJ got up and kept soldiering on, you know. And there's Kyle Peters, another guy that has some serious speed. Kind of a, a he's just, I don't want to call it a surprise. He's been, been around for a few years, but uh, definitely still strong. A lot of Hondas in, in this class, Jim. Yeah, I mean, and a lot of Hondas have dominated here in the years past. I mean, you look at it, Honda dominated with uh, six wins in a row from 08 to 2013 and in the middle right there 2010 11 and 12 three of those were barsha's and we'll get into the other guys later on there's the man right now marvin muskan he's been uh, silky smooth all season long he's finished second and third when he had to but won, won four races and right now he's three tenths faster than the field well you talk about it it's round seven for these guys but round 13 for the 450 guys. Marvin Muskin has a 13 point lead over the man who runs that number one. You just saw him there, Bogle. Yeah. Bogle really needs to win here tonight and have some uh, again and try to back up that win he had last weekend wow. in Detroit. But oh. Marvin Muskin is fast. Sorry to cut you off there. Eh? Marvin no, just he's blew fast. my mind with the corner speed there. Well, and, and he's he's only getting faster. I mean, he's still at that 48.9. Bogle's still at a 49.2. And right behind him, Jeremy Martin with a 49.7 there, and Savachi uh, a 49.8, and then with Nichols there, a, a flat 50 right there. Um, you know, all of those guys are so close right now, but you gotta remember, this is still that first time practice. 
I think it'll get faster as the night wears on. There's Justin Starling. I was gonna say, that looked like Andy Boyer there. My number, my number, running the pride. But uh, Joey Savacci here, Jim, um, well, you know, Justin, he's, he's uh, Justin Starling here in, in frame right now. Charging hard, trying to make a name for himself. It, it's tough when you're a rookie. And, you know, he raced a little last year, but he's a new guy. Got a lot of talent. Well, and last week, you know, he had a 12th, which was great for Starling there. But if you look back at the uh, the point standings for uh, Starling, I'm just trying to look down here and see where he's at in the points. There's Gannon Audette with the uh, Legends and Heroes ride there. It's going to be fun tonight. You know, Jeff Emig is going to be honored for the Legends and Heroes Award. Uh, I saw the Rockwell guys, and they got a cool watch they're going to give to him and stuff. And this is a big place for Jeff Emig. Winning that race in 1996, just awesome. Yeah, that was huge in 1996. April 27, 1996, Jeff Emig uh, derails Jeremy McGrath's 13 uh, race win streak. But getting back to Starling there, he's sitting 17th in the points. He's made every main event, so he's he's getting oh, the bike in boy. the main, which is good. Oh, saved it right there. He needs a lawyer for that case. That's the cheesy one line right there, but in that, in that case right there, that's the only thing I can think of. Well, folks, thank you for tuning in. We've had a little bit of trouble here to kick off the show, but we're going to get it back going. We've got some great guests coming up. We're going to have Jeff Ward, Danny Stevenson, Andrew Short. We're going to have G James Dakotas. It's going to be a cool show once we get rolling here. And we want to thank all of our sponsors, especially Amsoil. Amsoil Synthetic Dirt Bike Oil delivers maximum horsepower, bulletproof wear protection, and consistent clutch feel for the confidence you need to get on it, get after it, and stay out front. Amsoil Outfront Performance. We're going to be able to talk to Marvin Muskin here in a little bit. So we're going to go down to podium with Ashley Phillips. And Marvin picked it up that... Uh, Got even faster. Yeah, 48.3 for him. Almost a full second faster than everybody. So not surprising. He's been that way in qualifying so far in 2015. Yeah, Marvin, he's going to be unstoppable. And down to Ashley. Down into the 48 second range. One more time for Marvin Muskan. Marvin, congratulations. You're looking so comfortable on this track here in St. Louis. Tell me a little bit of your thoughts on the track. Well, we got a great dirt today in St. Louis and uh, track design is pretty cool. And uh, we got some ruts and uh, the whoops are actually a little bit small, but it's still really technical because we're going really fast through them and they're getting uh, rough right now. So track's good. I'm having fun, and uh, I knew I could do better than that, and then at the end, I got a good time, so it's going to be different tonight, I know. It's always different uh, during the, the races than on the, on the practice, so, uh, but we got to keep doing what I, what I do best, and it uh, should be good. Marvin, what sort of adjustments do you think that you're going to have to make on your bike or yourself throughout the day here in St. Louis? Well, I got great people around me, so it helps a lot. So I can adjust the bike the way I want it. And then uh, they have a lot of experience now and um, they, st they, they know me really well. So I want to thank those guys so much. And uh, we adjust the bike a little bit for that practice and uh, looks like it's working pretty good. Moving forward, only two rounds remained in this 250-2015 championship. Do you change your approach to tonight or the next round at all? Or do you just keep riding for the wins? Oh, no, I still ride uh, for the wins, you know. Uh, the championship is still really tight. I have some points lead uh, on Justin Bogle, but uh, I just want to win and, uh, and get the championship done. <laughs> well, congratulations on setting a good lap time here. We'll have one more round of qualifying, but one more time for this number 25 machine, Red Bull KTM rider Marvin Muskan. Thanks a lot, Ash. And there's Marvin. It's cool to hear from him. Track's pretty tough. It is, and you got a chance to see behind Marvin right. there, James Stewart, uh, out uh, watching that uh, 450 uh, uh, A practice, which is next, and he's watching Baggett kind of helping out, and he's been here signing some autographs. So uh, there's Longest Mr. autograph line in the pit still. Yeah, Mr. <laughs> James Stewart right there. Well, uh, we haven't got much of a chance to view the track yet, but we're going to go ahead and take a look at the Kawasaki track map. Here it comes. Well, you're going to look at it here, Andy, in the Edwards Jones Dome here, and it, it's pretty uh, – Simple starting line. You're just going to go right down, and I don't know if they're even going to have a chance to shift. You're going to go right into a left hand, and right out of that, it's a timing section. And if you can get this and nail this triple, we've seen it done a couple different ways. You're going to make another right hander after that, and then right into there, you're going to get into 
a set of whoops. And then out of there, uh, another uh, double. And then another double from there. And uh, yeah, it's, um, that's the, uh, the Kawasaki trap map. It's pretty cool to see these guys. There's a 65 foot triple and then you're gonna land off of that. And then you got this uh, step on, step off. It's a real key here. And that's it for the Kawasaki track map. That was it, yeah. Well, the track here tonight, the story already is the ruts and the deter deteriorating track conditions. But the, tr the uh, Feld track crew is out there right now smoothing them out. They're going to keep on top of that the best they can. But eventually, they're going to have some big ruts in the middle of these rhythm sections. And that creates quite a problem. Well, and I, I think that we're, we're seeing uh, the, the Feld track crew uh, behind us out there with the does. And they just want to make a great track for everybody. Not quite as bad of ruts as we've seen in the past, like, say, a Daytona or uh, Indianapolis. Right. But still, for the, the speed that they're having tonight here, it's a pretty fast technical track. Uh, they they want to make it safe for the guys. So that's why we're seeing a little bit of this downtime right now before the 450As get out there and get get after it. Yeah, it's just it's this, it's softer dirt, you know, and softer dirt breeds ruts. They put a lot of water on it. It's, uh, it's going to be interesting. The dirt is really good, so we're going to have some good, fast action in the corners, and it's going to be exciting. So uh, we actually let's talk about some of that excitement. We went down to talk to a couple guys on track walk. Here's their interviews. Jim Holly, Race Day Live, presented by Amsoil with the team Honda manager over there, Dan Bentley. Uh, not a bad weekend for you last weekend. Uh, you, you win the 250 class, and then Eli wins the 450. Yeah. Cole Seeley has the third, but unfortunately, uh, Trey Kennard has that injury. Give us an update on how Trey's doing. Uh, it was definitely a bittersweet weekend, you know. Um, good results. Cole's been doing really strong every week now, and, and um, I think he understands he belongs to be there. Um, uh, Eli pretty much dominated the entire day, um, but unfortunate um, for Trey having that situation, uh, ended up breaking his left arm. Um, underwent surgery on Monday, um, a successful surgery. Everything went really well, um, really optimistic and hoping he's going to be on uh, the starting line for Sacramento. Yeah, that was, uh, you know, I talked to one of the uh, HRC guys and they said, yeah, he's planning on coming back for the yeah. first start of the national. That's, yeah. uh, I, I think that's an attribute to how in shape these guys are and things like that, that they can come back so quick. Yeah, I mean, he's definitely motivated to do it. Um, I think um, he's, he went to three separate doctors. They all had the same opinion um, on how to correct the injury. Jim Holly, Race Day Live, presented by Amsoil with the team Honda manager over there, Dan Bentley. Uh, not a bad weekend for you last weekend. Uh, you, you win the 250 class, and then Eli wins the 450. Yeah. Cole Seeley has the third. And welcome back to the Edward Jones Dome. Sorry, folks, we're continuing to have a little bit of trouble, but we're still going to work on it for you, and we'll get it smoothed out. Hey, man, the five words in show business, the show must go on, and we're going to keep rolling, huh, it, it, It's rolling just like those dozers out there yep. from the Feld Tracker. You see everybody kind of off to the side there, just kind of waiting, talking to the mechanics and things like that. But they've almost got them off. They kind of made a few changes. Uh, I think it's for the better, kind of pushed. Uh, and we saw it happen last week in Detroit, too. I mean, you know, we've always talked about it, Andy, w when you're here and you build a track, and it looks good on paper yeah. <laughs> not every time does it work the riders go out there and you're going oh we got to make a change and and that's what this is all about because they want to make the change now so when they go out for their final time practice they'll have an opportunity to lay down a good fast lap time and get some practice under their belt before they go into those heat races later on in the night it's gonna you know this this race let's go back and talk about 1996 Jeremy McGrath has won 13 races in a row Jeff Fimmig steps up in his home state and knocks off McGrath and wins that race. You know, and then later on, you remember Kelly Smith and uh, Ernesto Fonseca? Oh, yeah. Kelly Smith has that thing in the bag, and then Erne Ernesto lands on him. And then, they, you know, they're fighting and shoving each other on the podium. And then 2005, Ricky Carmichael has a chance to win, and he's trying to wrap up the championship. And remember what happened? Yeah, his uh, titanium yeah. rear spring broke. And, I mean, that, that was uncharacteristic. <laughs> and, you know, it, it broke. And, it, you know, he had a crash in the whoops. I mean, just some weird things always happen here. They do. And, uh, unfortunately, I think we got a little bit of that bad <laughs> luck here today. Uh, but th that's okay. You, you know, you like we always talk about it, you win your championships on your – our broadcast <laughs> we're going to win today on our, our – uh, but uh, – uh, Bad days. Yeah, it, it's <laughs> one of those things that happen. But, you know, the thing that I like about it, 
you know, even though McGrath, uh, that next year he came back on a Suzuki in 1997 and he won. Right. Only the one of, uh, he's only won two races on that Suzuki that year and uh, it, it lost the championship to Jeff Emig. But, uh, you know, a lot of people criticized Jeremy. I remember when he left Honda and went to Suzuki yeah. and things like that. But, you know, he wanted to change the pace and then, you know, he still wasn't done. He went over to Yamaha and uh, Larry Brooks and Chaparral and, you know, those guys won a, a bunch of championships. They sure but did. <laughs> just, uh, I mean, the last time Honda's won here, I mean, if you look at it, uh, 08, Kevin Wyndham, that's a long time to go without a win. So maybe Cole Seeley, we talked about it in that interview, uh, uh, myself and uh, Dan Bentley, you know, that maybe tonight, and he said, you know, everything's got to be in line, you know, for Cole. And I said, yeah, but here's the good thing about it. I've seen everything in line with Cole Seeley on winning heat races this year in, in uh, you know, in Phoenix and other ones that he's won. So if, if Cole can go out there and grab a whole shot, pick up $1,500 from Supercross Live, and, and just get out there and run his own race for, you know, 20 laps, yeah. he could get his first of his career here in St. Louis for Cole Seeley. Oh, I, I agree. You know, going back to Daytona, Indy, Detroit, Seeley's been on fire. So let's keep an eye on him tonight. Stay tuned, folks. We've got some great guests coming up. We're going to have a good time with Jeff Ford and Danny Stevenson. For now, here's a word from our sponsors. We'll be right back. Hey, welcome back to St. Louis, Missouri, here in the Edward Jones Dome. Round 13 already in this series, man. Five to go. That's it. Five to go. Uh, Dungy, 77-point lead. Actually, 67-point lead over over uh, Trey. Trey Kennard, unfortunately. Trey Kennard uh, had that crash last week. Him and Weimer both out. And, uh, uh, the Brutal. Uh, Michael Essie not riding. I heard that he's probably not going to come back this year, as well as Vince Freezer. We want to wish those guys uh, the best of luck in, in getting back healthy and, and getting ready for the outdoors. Absolutely. You know, it's it's the dog days of the series, and this is the toughest sport on the planet. I said it uh, over and over and over again. I wrote about it in my column. It's just what, what makes winning this championship so special. It, you got to be there every weekend. You got you to be fast, and you got to be a little lucky, Jim. Well, and, and you talk about that championship. I go back to 2010, Ryan Dungey, a rookie. He actually won here in St. Louis because Ryan Villapoto crashed, and he was battling for the championship. But you know, he was here for all the rounds, and, and Villapoto wasn't. So, I mean, uh, back then, uh, you know, for a rookie, I mean, I remember doing the broadcast, yeah. and uh, no other rookie has won the championship their rookie season except for Jeremy McGrath right. back in 93. So, a long time come, but uh, he's definitely in the driver's seat, that's for sure. He's got a, you know, 77-point lead yeah. uh, over third place, which second's not here. So, uh, you know, he's uh, he, he just needs to do what he needs to do. And we've talked about it last week in Detroit as we're getting ready. Uh, Ronnie Stewart there, got his whole shot device there locked down. These guys are ready to go, and they're off. There's Weston Pike, 23, and Eli Tomac in there. Well, Jim, you know, a lot of the talk I saw this week centered around Tomac saying, okay, now Tomac's going to win because Dungey's not going to ride hard. Well, guess who was the fastest guy in untimed practice this morning? Ryan Dungey. That's right. And Ryan Dungey told me his plan of attack to finish out this series, Jim, was to try to get more wins, to stay on the aggressive, stay on the whip, and try to, you know, not not deter from that. Well, I, I agree with him. Like we talked about, I, I said specifically, you know, if the win presents itself, he's going to do it. But he's not going to do anything stupid. He knew Eli Tomac was fast last week. He was fast qualifier. Yeah. And he's not going to get pressured into a mistake. But on the other hand, hey, Ryan Dungey gets big bonuses for wins. So right. why wouldn't you keep winning? You know, I mean, <laughs> right. to lay down and say, okay, there's five to go. I'm just going to finish second, thirds, and fourths and stuff. That's not Ryan uh, Dungey's character. He wants to win. And if the win is right there in his grasp as we're getting a chance to watch him. There's some of those ruts. Um, he, he's going to do it, but he's not going to do anything stupid, and that's not Ryan Dungey either. He's not going to throw things away. How about Josh Grant? Really clicked it up here in the second half of the series, rattling off some top tens. I, I did a very good interview with him on the track walk, and you, you got to check it out. Uh, but, you know, I didn't know he was injured. He had an injury out west, and he had some bike problems and things like that. Yeah. But... He had a six last week. He had a little help from Blake Baggett on that last lap when Blake, Blake Baggett threw it away and ended up getting eighth. But uh, there's Ryan Dungey with that big uh, double and step on. And now we're looking at Grant here. You know, and Grant's another guy. you got to remember, this guy's won one of these things. He has that speed where if he gets a whole shot, don't be surprised if he gets a gap on somebody and has a chance to win one of these things. It's well, not out of the question. And not only win, he's had podiums here before in St. Louis. That's right. So, I mean, he likes this dirty, likes the atmosphere. I think, uh, you know, he's looking to break into that top five. That's what his goal is. He's had some sixth. 
but he hasn't been in that top five in 2015. He'd love to do that, and he's not putting a lot of pressure. He said the top five. He didn't say a podium. Right. First things first, let's get a top five, and first things first, he said, I got to get a start, and, I, and it all starts with, he goes, I've been in too many semis this year. I need to get into that top three or four in those heat races to get a better gate pick. And there's our, our friend Ronnie Stewart. Wonder if he's breaking in that new wheel wheel that he was uh, setting up yesterday. We got a chance to talk to him, and uh, he said that he had a new wheel. I asked him, I go, he goes, that's my spare. I said, what about you? You should probably just go out there and run one of the practices and break it in a little bit, you know, that rear wheel. So maybe he's got that new rear wheel, rear wheel out there. But uh, he also battling some injuries, uh, you know, that happened yeah. in Atlanta cool to see those guys changing their own tires and working on their own bikes and stuff it's not cool i wish they didn't have to do that i wish they could all be factory riders but that's why he's out there trying hard and, and, and racing hard trying to get where cole seeley's at here you know factory hrc pretty much the top of the mountain yeah see the thing's different in those whoops as we watch cole seeley go by there you know they're not quite that deep you're not going to see the bikes dancing uh, you know like we've seen in the past and and some violent get offs in the whoops oh. I, I haven't seen anybody get off in the woods. I noticed when Cole Seeley jumps, his left foot sometimes comes off of that peg. Yeah, I'll have to ask him about that. Him and Bogle, you know, Bogle's right leg comes off. Just their style, you know, whatever you want to call it, leg swag or whatever. But uh, it's just this new generation of guys. They scrub so hard, and, and they're so aggressive in between in the rhythm sections. They do weird stuff. Second of his career, second in 2015 also for him. He went with a 48-8. Followed by Justin, Justin Brayton, Brayton with a 48-9. And on through the top five there. Tomac's third, Anderson's fourth, Dungey's fifth, Reed's sixth, Millsap's seventh, Short eighth, Tickle, and Grant round out your top ten. But, uh, you know, Tomac here, it, I don't want to call it a bummer, but seeing that much time between his win in Phoenix and then his win last weekend in Detroit, I don't think I saw that coming. I thought Tomac was going to win more frequently this year, but I don't think any of them saw the diesel coming. He just showed up and was stronger than people were, were expecting. He's always going to be strong. I mean, uh, you know, yeah. you can never count that guy out. I mean, nope. you got to remember that this is round 13. We've had 12 rounds previously. Yeah. 11 of those rounds, he's been on the podium. Yeah. He's got a number of wins. <laughs> the only round he did not finish on the podium was Anaheim in the opener. And you know what? A diesel, they kind of start off slow. Yeah. He's on a roll right now, but he had a fourth at that opener there. There's Harrison, another hard charging privateer that snuck into a couple main events. You know, as an unfortunate aspect, you know, as the, the top guys get injured, some of these guys get a chance to oh, – that was pretty sketchy Whoa. there. That double is really technical. It's like a crow hop right before. It's a little roller right before it, and then it shoots him up. It pops him up real high. Yeah, but Brayton being a veteran, he knew that yeah. uh, Harrison had a little bit of a difficulty and just chopped the throttle and rode around. I'm going to give a little shout-out to Alex Ray. He's sitting 20th right now in the uh, time practice there. He made his first uh, main event last weekend in Detroit. I want to congratulate him. I and uh, Brian McDonald, I know Brian works with him a lot and helps him out, but he was so excited to uh, be in that main event. And I always really liked to, to go down there and I look at the enthusiasm and he was just happy to be in there and uh, look for him to carry on that uh, like, yeah. winning way. Good to see Ju Justin Brayton back. Um, he, he says he really likes his motorcycle. He says his shoulder is still not as strong as he wants it to be, but the thing he's stoked about was that his speed's good. You know. He, Every racer, when you're off for an expended amount of time, such as Justin was, you know, you, you just wonder if you still have it when you climb back on the bike. And sure enough, you know, got good starts, had good speed, and says he really likes his machine, and he looks forward to putting some good top 10 and top 5 finishes in here down the stretch. And I think he was happy with that 10th uh, place, you know. The number 10 yeah. finishes number 10. Not a bad way to, uh, you know, after all the injuries he had and sitting out and everything like that. But look at Dungey there with that triple-double double, into triple, that double, corner. Yeah little slip up right there going into that over the uh, monster energy finish line they got about uh, 330 to go clicked him up into third place there yeah but so Tomac. Look, at the, look at the top three jim 47 eights yeah. and then fourth is a 47 <laughs> the top five are separated by one tenth yeah. well this, no this is Tomac gonna be a, this is gonna down. be a, yeah this is gonna be a close one but Tomac with that 47 eight Ooh. right there he's on fire again i mean he, he knows that uh you know, him and Seeley are carrying the torch for uh, Honda, Honda over there with uh, Trey Kennard out. We want to risk Trey the, a speedy recovery uh, as well as Jake Weimer. Yeah, um, it's just unfortunate, you know, and first lap, second corner of that s semi, and 
Jake made a little mistake halfway through it, and Trey was already committed to tripling, and it was just unfortunate. You know, you never want to see guys land on each other like that. And as bad as they're hurt, I'm glad they're not hurt any worse. Number 58 there, that's Killian uh, Russ. Killian Russ there. He's been putting in some good rides. Again, another journeyman privateer that hard charging. You know, he's got a, a good style, very aggressive. 16th not last a, weekend. Yeah, not a lot of support, doing it on his own and getting in the main events, man. Add, padding that the checkbook. Five main events for uh, Killian Rusk uh, so far. You know, five out of uh, 12, not not bad. He just crushed that right-handed corner, too. So let's see where that put him. That was Might have bumped him up a little bit. Uh, waiting for it. Still update, down in... But, uh, yeah. 21st with a 52.1 for Killian Rusk. Tell you what I'm surprised at right now is seeing Blake Baggett down there in 15th place. He's four seconds off the pace. That's kind of that's not really his style the last few, you know, few rounds. Yeah, I'm, I'm not surprised. Uh, you know, I'm kind of I'm, I'm, I'm surprised that, uh, you know, where he's at as far as that goes. So trying to take a look at him and see where uh, he's at. I'm going to kind of look around here and See uh, if we can find the number four. He was well, actually in the Andrew. mechanics area. Yeah. Uh, Blake Baggett in the mechanics area and uh, getting ready to uh, go back out here. A lot of guys actually in the mechanics area. Here goes Blake Baggett. He's re-entering into the track, uh, Blake Baggett is, uh, on turn number six. So he'll be in between six and five right now for Blake Baggett. There's Ben LeMay and Kyle Chisholm. Now we just watched Shorty do a whole lap there in, on a heater, and that got him up to eighth place. Once again, folks, Andrew's going to come up here and talk to us, and me and Jim are going to get to the bottom of these hole shots with Andrew. You know, everybody says, oh, it's the gearing, it's the gearing, but, well, it's what's... got a little bit to do with it, but you got to give the rider yeah. some credit, too, you know. It's <laughs> He's just, doing something else. It's just, just not yeah. the motorcycle. Yeah. But they do say it's a particular setup. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna get to the bottom of it and figure it out because he's getting hole shots with his eyes closed nowadays. I really like that shot where it looks above where Ryan uh, Dungey was at going through the whoops right there. Yeah. And look like uh, Rusk now on here. There's Ryan Dungey there. I like how he really seed hops a lot of these sections and things like that. It's not quite as loamy as a lot of people think. It's it's loamy out there, but you know some of the spots uh, after you land. Uh, you know, when you come out of uh, by the uh, podium there, it's a little bit hard as you come around that right-hander by the starting line. Wow, Dungey just crushed that rhythm section right there. It looks He's definitely on a heater here. Let's stay on him and see what this ends up. Right now he's in fifth place, and I promise you at the end of this lap he's going to move up from there. I'm going to turn around and, and check him out. There's Ben LeMay on his Husky. I know he's... Uh, Mike Alessi's team over there, uh, Moto Concepts, kind of taking his bike around for him. That's pretty good uh, for Ben LeMay, help him out a little bit. I'm like, I'm, you know, I'm watching this split rhythm section, and they're using both lanes. I just saw Tomac and Dungey go through there side by side, and it looks pretty equal. Let's see where Dungey here, he finishes his lap. Let's see where he bumps. Yeah, yeah, bumps right up to second. Yeah, 48-1. Uh, so three-tenths off of Tomac. 48-7 and a 48-1 are your top two fastest times. Tomac or Dungey is going to be down here to talk to Lurch in a little bit. We're going to hear more about the track and how it's working up. And Chad Reed right there just yeah. kind of pulling up a little bit. That's that split lane that we talked about. Yeah. Looked like he was going to go to the inside, that left-hander, but he decided to jump to the outside and kind of roll it. But this practice is over. That's it for these boys. Tomac. Yeah. With a 47.8. They say the Hondas are set up particularly uh, well in the in the softer soil. They, they enjoy the softer soil a little bit more. And Seeley. And uh, here comes Tomac down here to talk to Lurch. Let's see what he has to say. I bet she's not breathing very hard when he starts talking. <laughs> Guy's a beast. Well, he's getting his helmet off now. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give it up for the Geico Honda, the number three of Eli Tomac, 47, only guy in the 47 range, uh, putting together some great laps there. Yeah, I was able to uh, throw that one down early on, and um, after that, it was just trying to take a, take a couple different lines and trying to figure some stuff out. Uh, we got a long rhythm section down this lane that I was trying to kind of mess around with, you know, maybe bust out a little extra triple or quad later on. Um, so, yeah, yeah, that was good to get one down early, and um, hopefully... Uh, 
we can do another one and just get some more saw laps in the second practice. You know, when you when you talk about the track and trying to develop some new stuff, the split lane, obviously, uh, a choice to be made. Is one going to hold out throughout the night, or is it going to be a play it by ear as the uh, day goes on? I think it's going to be a play it by ear section. Um, you know, it seems pretty even right now. I don't know. I think the inside might have a little bit on on the outside right now, but uh, if you can do something in the outside rhythm combo, it might pay off later. But uh, just depends how the routes form up. You know, normally we're seeing lap times around 55 seconds throughout the uh, the rest of the uh, series. These at 47. Does that surprise you on this track? Um, you know, it's pretty fast, and the and the whoops are really tame. So I think that's what, that's where we're, or why we're getting that uh, low lap time. Well, ladies and gentlemen, let's give it up for the Geico Honda, the number three E better known as Eli Tomac. I think on the back of his yeah. pants and some, I saw ET3 yeah. on some of his pants. Yeah, they've been calling him ET for a while, Eli Tomac there. But uh, you know, one thing I noticed is he's wearing that mouth guard, and I've noticed Joey Savacci and Blake Baggett and Eli, they're all running their mouth guard. And, and that's interesting because uh, some of the Japanese uh, riders that I had over, Masaki, Suzuki, and, and uh, uh, Kaisei and all the guys, yeah. they had it also. It kind of reminds me of football players with a mouthpiece. Uh -huh. you, you know, I'm not so sure that some of those guys, maybe they went to their dentist or whatever, and their dentist goes, <laughs> grinding man, your you're teeth. grinding your teeth <laughs> out there. And so the, they might say, well, wear a mouth guard then and put that thing in there, and that'll stop that grinding. want to give a shout-out to uh, Dave Moss, a good buddy of mine uh, recovering from uh, cancer. He's, he's listening in, as well as uh, Greg Blackman. I, he uh, lays carpet. He actually laid some carpet in for me on one of the buildings, and uh, – uh, those guys are listening. Cool. They, he, he said, yeah, I listen to you each and every weekend, Andy and you and stuff. Yeah. You guys do a great job. Yeah, hey, that's cool, man. Good to I hear. Appreciate Thanks it. for tuning in for sure. And, hey, folks, if you're ready to turn the corner, check out the National MX Champion YZ250F and Super Nimble YZ450F at YamahaMotorsports.com or visit your local Yamaha dealer. And DC Shoes is proud to be the official footwear sponsor of AMA Supercross. Defy convention with DC Shoes. Kevin Tapia right there, 211. I had a chance to talk to him. I go, Kevin. Barely missed it last week. Yeah, he said, he got, I got fifth. I just yeah. missed it. I said, you know, I, all the guys were in at Anaheim 1, and you make the main event. Now we have a lot of guys out, and you're not making the main event. What's up? He says, I don't know, Jim. <laughs> so we well, got to figure it out. He goes, this week for sure I'm going to get the 211 Suzuki it's into tough. that main event. It's tough, man. There's a lot of those guys are all, you know, sitting Whoa, hang on, hang on, on Tevin. Yeah, those ruts, you know, you got you got Archer out there, you got Adam Intiknap, you got Tevin Tapia, you got Ronnie Stewart, you got Alex Ray, you know, you got Harrison, you got Devin Raper. You know, I'm, I'm just naming names off the top of my head right now, and all those guys are tough, and they're fast, and it makes that last chance qualifier in the semis really competitive. So, you know, when you ask him why he isn't getting in and he says, I don't know, there's your answer. Yeah. <laughs> Answer, well, he, look yeah. at that big seed hop right there to do that triple. Uh, you double, know, triple, that triple double section. on the right side. That's what Tomac was just explaining there. He feels that the inside might be a little bit faster, but you know, on the outside, you got to hook that big triple in the middle of the section. You get so so high in the air. This right here, you know, you got to triple this or triple out. There, they're tripling out, but the fast line is to triple in again. You know, with the ruts and stuff, it's it, <laughs> it's it's tough. Oh. oh, came up a little short there. That. Uh, Took the wind out of the sails, I like to say. Yeah. <laughs> He's going to putt around. See, I mean, it's just not that section. Now it, it ruins everything. You can't triple this section. You're looking over. You know, you just you wrist got his hurts. hand off the bar now. You know, yeah. that probably hurt him a little bit. See him moving his wrist around. It, 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 it's, uh, yeah, he's going to pull in now. I think he's going to ride around. He, I hope he didn't hurt his wrist that bad. It's uh, not good for uh, Tevin Tapia there. There's number 548. That's Brock uh, Shimlin. And he's running the uh, John Slater uh, skins there on that bike, getting some other advertisement for some of his sponsors. Johnny Bueller there, 542. Johnny Bueller coming to us all the way from California here for the East Coast here in St. Louis, Missouri. Yeah. 
And folks, if you're tuning in right now, send us some questions. Uh, you know, super hashtag Supercross Live, hashtag Ask RDL. You know, if you want to ask some questions to Jeff Ward or Andrew Short or James Dakotis or Denny Stevenson or Chuck Sun, send us a question in and we'll get it asked for you. You know, I wonder if one of my old buddies, Jojo Keller, I wonder if he uh, <laughs> hashtags uh, RDL because he's a good buddy of uh, Jimmy Dakotis. I know uh, him and Jojo are good buddies up there in Massachusetts. Yeah, look at those ruts starting to really develop. There's Noah McConaughey there. Looking good there. Yeah, the ruts are tough. It's They put a lot of water down. Oh, red flag now. Someone got off in the whoops. Not sure who that was, but uh, hopefully he's up and okay. There's one of the bike with those skins you were talking about earlier with the, you know, a lot of room for sponsors on that. That's the 869. Robert Lind, Robert Lind, uh, he's from down Sweden. from Wildemore, California. Yeah. Oh yeah, Sweden? Yeah, Robert Lind, uh, Swedish rider. Uh, been putting in some good rides and practices. Hopefully he'll be okay. You know, 131, Sometimes, you know, you think the whoops would be, uh, s you know, safer when they're smaller, but the speed goes up so much that it's tough. And you come, come in there third or fourth gear wide open into those things. If you make a little mistake, you know, things start happening really quickly. and. You get in trouble. Yeah, that was uh, Noah McConaughey, uh, 131. He's actually got a good time, a 54-1. He's sitting third right now. Yeah. And Archer uh, at the top of the leaderboard with a 52-8, followed by Tevin Tapia with that 53. I'm trying to look around, see if I see Tevin Tapia circulating around the track out there. Uh, hopefully he'll be okay, though, with that uh, little case that he had. Didn't look like that bad of a case, but... Sometimes, you know, with that being yeah. said, you got that nagging wrist injury, and that just Ooh, jarred it yeah. even more. Exactly. Here's our friend Alex Ray there. Got a little love from the Honda HRC boys. Uh, Man, that was did cool. Did an interview with him. That was cool. They I, came over and patted him on the back. That was good timing, Jim. That was a nice thing you did for him. You know, he makes his first main event, and then right there is the Japanese HRC head executives, you know, and then he gets a handshake from them. That's getting it done right there. Pretty cool. You, you know, Tad O'Connell used to work for Yamaha Motor Corporation when I was a privateer. You know, I always really, you know, as a privateer, you really take notice of that kind of stuff that, you know what, these guys are busy, these HRC guys with Trey Kennard and, and Cole Seeley and Eli Tomac and everything. But for them to recognize that, hey, this is a privateer guy that got into the main event on one of our bikes, you know, yeah. a little pat on the back. It always went a long way with Heck me. Yeah. I know I tried a lot harder uh, the next weekend when I know that uh, some of the Japanese engineers were watching. Well, that's what it's all about, you know? Ain't about money and, you know, trophies. It's about that kind of recognition, you know? A well, little, little bit about money. Well, maybe a little, For the yeah. privateer guys. <laughs> when they get right. that main yeah. event, they make a lot Just of money. They're happy. Money to get that gas tank full enough to get to the next race. As we're watching uh, Travis Bannister here. Travis Bannister all the way from Colorado. Yeah, looking good as he's blitzing the whoops there. And Going to make this uh, double right here. This is a pretty huge double like you talked about. Yeah. It's got a little funky a little roller, roller right before it. It shoots him up. Let's see if he hits a triple in the middle here. He's going to have to. Uh, yeah, I don't think so. He's going to play it kind of good. But he hit the triple Tripled exiting. Mm -hmm. So that's the difference in those timing sections. If you really want to pull the trigger and triple, double, or do you want to double, triple a little bit easier that way as we saw Bannister do it that way. But the thing about it, is Eli Tomac, he said, well, maybe there might be a quad there. So it'll be interesting to see that next time practice if somebody uh, doesn't decide to, let's uh, see if we can quad this section here. There's Tony Archer. Tony's been riding good. He was uh, battling in the semi last weekend with uh, no less than Davey Millsaps. When you remember, Millsaps went down and had to charge back through the pack, and Archer was racing him tough, squared him up in the corner, and Again, another guy that's going to try to get into the main event tonight. We've had some uh, attrition, had some guys fall out, and it just opens up the window of opportunity. Yeah, not not bad. I mean, you know, he's sitting 31st in the uh, uh, point standings. He's had a couple main events. Uh, I know he made the Indianapolis one because right. that's the one we were talking about. But, uh, I mean, that was last week when he had. But he did make it, and he got three points in Indianapolis. That was the last time he made that main event, having some problems, though, last weekend in Detroit for Tony Archer. This one's starting to wind down, though. It's uh, got about a minute. Uh, 
about 56 seconds now for the boys here in Ooh. this uh, practice. And you got to remember that this is going to be uh, one of the final practices. We don't have a C group uh, coming out, I don't think. I could be wrong on that. But if we look at it, uh, you know, with the amount of entries, uh, 46 entries today in that uh, in the uh, 450 class. So I think with uh, 46, I think they're just going to the AMA and the FIM. They're just going to say let's uh, let's just do A and B group here in the 450. But somebody tweeted in our buddy, the Minnesota Madman. <laughs> I'm going to call him now, Kurt Binky. <laughs> Yeah, if they had a vet race after the little kids on the KTMs with Jimmy and Andy, would we race it? And if, yeah, heck yeah, we'd race it. Absolutely here, <laughs> Kurt. On this track, I would, because the whoops are not that big, and I think I could get across yeah. it. But some of the tracks, nah, I don't want to go out there. But I'd like to take a couple laps here, and I'm sure you would too, Andy. It's not, yeah, man, it's been it? uh, since 1996. That was my first professional Supercross race in this stadium, on you know, on this dirt. And... But I'd want the Feld track crew before we I want go out there. it out, man. Yeah, you got to take out the ruts because I don't want to deal out. with the ruts here. <laughs> I was just watching Archer there again. I was, I was had my eye on him. He's really riding well. You know, he's getting around there with a 52.8. That's uh, you know half a second faster than Tapia. And there's my buddy Chad Cook, number 918. Oh, that's Alex Ray. My bad. Dustin Pipes. Oh, right, that's uh, Michael Acaden. Up into that right, top Archer. five. Yeah. Yeah, not too bad for the boys. You know, 52s, you know, like we talked about, Eli Tomac was saying, you know, that, you know, normally a Supercross anywhere from 55s to, you know, a, a minute. So with uh, the uh, B qualifying group of 52s, uh, that just goes to show you that this track here, you know, it is fast tonight. And they're yeah. getting across the whoops. They're getting through the whoops really fast. You know, unfortunately, we had that guy go down there in that practice. But uh, once again, folks, want to thank you for tuning in to Race Day Live. We've got everything going nice and smooth right now. And stay with us. We're going to have Andrew Short coming up. We're going to have James Dakotas. It's going to be fun to talk to those guys, you know, especially Dakotas. What a following that guy has, the Ripper. Yeah, the Ripper. He's got a lot of uh, a lot of following. Uh, and uh. Like you said, Jeff Ward's going to try to make his way up. That'll be cool. Oh, Jeff Ward, you know, I mean, seven-time AMA national champion, almost wins the Indianapolis 500, supermoto champion, current trainer at Cole Seely, one of the coolest guys ever. And I want to hear you two talk about you guys banging bars. <laughs> and we have all those guests coming up. Stay with us. Here's a word from our sponsors. We'll be right back. And welcome back to the Edward Jones Dome here in St. Louis, Missouri. Round 13, 2015 Monster Energy AMA Supercross and FIM World Championship. Here comes the little guys, Jim. Yeah, the two tri two Christies out there, Christy LaCurl. They got their hands full, but they do such <laughs> a great job. And one of these young riders all the way from Germany. That was pretty yeah, cool. Very cool. You know, and what a good treat for him. On this stage in, in the, in the uh, Monster Energy Supercross Championship, it doesn't get any cooler. I couldn't imagine what it was like. You know, I raced when I was these guys' age, and I couldn't imagine being on one of those machines that's so trick here inside of Supercross. It, it, it's just a cool thing. I'm glad KTM does this for these little guys because you know they got to be super, super stoked. Well, and you look at them, they're all seven and eight years old. They're, they're, they're like little factory stars. They get uh, free swag, you know, <laughs> a GoPro camera, gear, well, they do goggles, the track walk things and like everything that. Yeah. with the big guys and. No, I mean, how cool would it be to, you know, they, they always walk up and they high-five like you see them high-five Dungey or, or Ken Roxon or something, about, you know, they're heroes. They're getting a chance to ride on the track that their heroes are riding on. Very cool. And, folks, the Amsoil products that put racers in the winter circle are the same products available to you. Amsoil makes a full line of oils not only for your power sport, sports toys but also for the cars and trucks you drive. Choose Amsoil for performance for any engine. And MMI, if you want to win, MMI and Amsoil have teamed up to give you a chance to win a replica of Kevin Windham's Honda CRF 450R Supercross bike. Go to winkevinsbike.com for your chance to win. <laughs> Check out the little guys going over the, you know, the face of the triple there. That thing must look like a mountain for them. Yeah, it is pretty big out there. And, and some of the ruts, too. They, they always carve to that inside. They <laughs> want to stay out of the ruts. They They're That's kind of an interesting question there. You know, if, if, do you, if you, do you want to start as a little kid, do you have to start as a little kid if you want to become a professional? Not true. You know, no. Let's remember John Dowd. He didn't even start racing until he was 16. Yeah, I mean, I, it makes it maybe a little bit easier, but on the right. other side of that, some of the guys, when you start out, they, they, they get burnt out. out. I mean, they've been riding since they've been 
five years old and they, they get 18, 19. They, They're over it. They get a girlfriend. Yep. That, that's always a really <laughs> cars. Good, yeah, girlfriends, yeah. cars, things like that. But yeah. uh, no, I mean, I, I think that, uh, you know, if you have the talent and you can ride a motorcycle fast, um, yeah, you don't have to be a little kid. But uh, it's a great family sport, though, so why not get the little guys involved with it and have some fun with it? I'll tell you what, it doesn't matter where you're at. In, in our sport, the competition's thick. You go watch these guys at the Nationals at, like, Ponca City or Loretta Lynn's or the Texas Nationals. The, the 50 classes are unbelievable. You know, I cannot believe how fast they were going. I was watching Hayden Deegan at the Ricky Carmichael Amateur Supercross, and he was scrubbing over this huge 65-foot double, wide open. And the, the talent and the, the level of equipment that they're on just combines to be a pretty cool spectacle, man. Well, th this is the next generation. I, I know, uh, you know, when I was growing up, it was a, a homemade mini bike that <laughs> I had to start on, you know. And when you were growing up, y you know, with y the extended swing arm. PW50. Nine foot mean, muffler. <laughs> these things are full on works bikes, I like yeah. to call them, man. They're a mini replica of yeah. Ryan Dungey and Marvin Upside Muskin's down bikes. Forks, front and rear disc brakes, FMF pipe. I mean, triple clamps. These things are sick. They're. Very, very cool machines at KTM. And what's cool, and I think that's fair, is they're all the same. You know, so if Johnny, Equal equipment. Yeah. If Johnny gets number 14, and he's got the same bike that Steven has on number 8. So, But I can guarantee you that little Johnny, <laughs> is it Johnny 14? I'm not sure. Uh, those were just but hypothetical. Yeah. Yeah. But, but, <laughs> oh, one of the little guys went down there. But, you know, if, if he wanted 14 and another kid wanted 14, because that's Cole <laughs> Seeley's number and Kevin Windham's previous yeah. number, I bet, oh, Dad, I didn't get number 14. Right. <laughs> you got 10. You got Brayden. He's on the same bike. <laughs> well, there's number 13, and round 13 of the series this year. Hasn't been very lucky for us, Jim, but we're getting it together here. Number 13 out there is James Howard from Cumberland, Kentucky. Just right down the road. I, I know that, uh, you know, Steve Ezell, he brought, he's a KTM dealer up there in Kentucky, and he actually brought down uh, – in, in the pits, you know, a, a, a big display. The party in the pits here, I'm going to tell you people that are listening, the party in the pits in St. Louis, phenomenal here. It's all indoors. You don't have to deal with the cold weather, although it yeah. is sunny out there right now, and it looks great. But uh, you don't have to deal with that cold weather, and just everybody gets a chance to bring all their yeah. equipment inside, all the semis are inside and things like that. It, it's a very nice facility here. Very cool, yeah. You know, the weather's pretty good. I think we're going to have a good crowd. Look at the people starting to turn out and fill up the grandstands. Watching yeah. uh, time practice and qualifying here inside the Edward Jones Dome. No, this ever, where, ever uh, since 1996, when the first event here, uh, you know, it's been huge. A, a great turnout here at the Edward Jones Dome. Home of the Rams. That's right. Marshall Falk tore yeah. it up in this place, you know. One of my favorite running backs in the NFL history, Marshall Falk was, but uh, – and like we said, we've got a lot of guests coming up. we got Andrew Short, James Dakota's coming up for us. And, and, uh, and look at the lap times for Mr. Adams there, number nine there, a 137. Yeah. That's not, you know, you're talking just about, you know, 38, 40 seconds off of that time uh, of the fastest qualifier there. That's cool. Yeah, on a 50cc machine with, with six-inch wheels. Yeah. So these guys are getting it done. There's number nine. That's uh, Van Adams from Morganton, Indiana. The little guy going through the ruts there. And he's even dropping it down. He's leading it. He's a, a 135 now for him. Yeah, these guys, poor guys, have to deal with the ruts and all that, you know, out there. And, you know, they're uh, – some of them get high side. I like some of their helmets, the design. Uh, Mohawk. You know, the helmets and yeah. stuff. That's pretty cool. Shredder. <laughs> I know that uh, – our next guest coming on, Andrew Short. He's a family man. He, he's got some kids. We'll have to ask Andrew when yeah. he gets on here if, uh, you know, one of his little guys are going to, uh, you know, join into this and join the festivities. Absolutely. A few tear-offs out there. You see some of the guys navigating there. Boy, look at the whoops. They really got beat up. Yeah, they're good. All right, there we go. Hey, Andrew, welcome to the show, man. Welcome to Race Day Live. Thanks, I appreciate it. You know, we were just talking about the whoops. <laughs> they look like you guys are going through there about fourth gear wide open. Yeah, honestly, they started off pretty small and round, and they were easy. But now, as you know, you could tell on the video screen there, they were, uh, you know, qu quite a bit tore up, uneven, and the bike gets unsettled really quick. And you have a lot of speed carrying in there, and 
So we'll see uh, how it develops as the night goes on, but it's going to be tough, like you said. I wanted to ask you, Andrew, the left or the right on that timing, on the split lane there, I see a lot of guys doing a lot of different things, you know. What do you think is the fastest line? I think it's going to change all night. You guys are going to have to pay attention because the, the dirt is so soft and it's getting so rutted. One side might be fast at the beginning of the night, and then as it uh, wears and, and tears, and everyone's going to transfer to the other side. And So whoever adapts the quickest and who's uh, fairly intelligent can be successful at that, su that section. Well, you look like you're riding pretty good today, man. You're getting along with the track okay. You were up there on the top of the board in the first session for a while. Yeah, I feel good. The dirt, I think all the riders really enjoy. Um, the venue is really cool. The pit party's rocking. That's what we were just saying. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a cool venue. Uh, I feel like St. Louis, uh, some crazy races have happened. I saw Jeff Emig <laughs> walking up here, and when I think of St. Louis, I think of Jeff Emig. Uh, he's been uh, really successful in the past, and so it's a cool venue. I think you never know what to expect, and uh, hopefully everyone stays safe and we have good racing. You talk about being successful. You've been successful this year. We yep. paid you a lot of money, <laughs> supercrosslive.com, for those whole shots. <laughs> now, I, I know it, 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 it's no secret, but you have a different gearbox. And everyone says, oh, it's the bike, it's the gearbox. But I say, you know what, you got to give some of the rider credit, right. you know, to get off of that line. Yeah, honestly, we run a production gearbox. It, the, the gearbox is coated for Supercross. It, it hardens the gears. But for me, uh, the, my final gearing is a, a bit different. Uh, I run 1453. We're Dungey and Brayton. They run a, a 1452. Um, but... It's a technique that I worked on for a couple of years. I started doing this uh, third gear start in 2014. Uh, it's not easy to master. Uh, Michael Byrne taught me. He was the one who initially wow. said, hey, uh, you should look into this. And I can't do it outdoors, obviously, but with the Supercross gearing, I can pull it off. And it's been uh, a lot of work in progress, and I put a lot of, uh, of heart and and it took me a long time to figure it out. So it's not like something everybody can do, just throw it in third and dump the clutch, you know. And a lot of clutches, too, probably, over that time of uh, learning how to uh, yeah, perfect talk, that art of starting to us third. about that, yeah. Honestly, it's, e it's easier on the clutch because uh, the way I release it, I'm not on the clutch very often. You know, if you're on a second gear start, you're trying to control it with the clutch and slip in it, where uh, my technique doesn't necessarily use a whole lot of clutch. So my bike set up. Uh, just for this, it took me a long time to fine tune it. And the other KTM guys, they know it, they have the data on it, and they choose to do second gear starts. It's one thing that it fits my style, and um, I've been on previous bikes, on previous brands. Once I figured it out, I knew what to do, and I could pull whole shots left and right. And this bike's no different. The new KTM's awesome, it yeah. has a great rev limiter. Uh, it's a little softer than most of the other brands, a little higher. So I think that's what allows uh, me to get really good starts this year. Well, keep building on that because that's just the start. Then you got to get around the whole track. What other parts of the track with that gearing do you have you had to try to work on, like in between the rhythms or? or nah. Nah, the gearing, that's the gearing I would run regardless if I was doing third gear starts or second gear starts. Okay. Um, because I like a lot of connection. Uh, the previous band I rode for, the electronics were spot on. Uh, the KTM, they don't, none of the other riders really like that, that connection that I do. I don't know if it's because I'm an older guy and yeah. I'm used to the original 450s that were carbureted and had a lot of power down though. <laughs> but the new ones are more they're, they're more electric. They don't have that snap, and I, I like that. I don't know if right. I'm getting old and lazy, <laughs> but uh, you know that's I how I like lazy. it. So the <laughs> extra tooth on the back definitely helps me. And so uh, there, there's way more to it. And I don't really necessarily want to get on it. Well, no, we don't, we don't want to divulge you. I mean, <laughs> yeah, keep yeah, what yeah, you're yeah. doing, you know. You don't want to, yeah. you know, because these are archived, and, and some of your competitors <laughs> can go back and kind of, that's how Andrew's doing it. But, you know, I want to ask you, you, you're working closely with the factory and Ian Harrison and, and helping them develop that bike as well as Dungey. Yeah, Air Shock. Yeah, I run completely different suspension those are, than those guys. And Martine from Europe is over here uh, this round, and we're starting to work on the outdoor stuff. But, uh, you know, once the season gets started, I kind of do my own deal. But in off-season, uh, yeah, I do some stuff for those guys. And I rode this bike really early on. Uh, it was disguised with other plastic and whatnot and uh, had a lot of involvement working with engineers. And it's really cool to see the heart and passion that the KTM guys have and made some good friends along the way. And I really like it. So it's a cool company, and it's cool to see their success as well. Well, you've had a lot of success on it. You know, you've kind of had a career revival, so that's cool. But, you know, I remember the first time I saw you race was the Greeley Super Arena Cross, <laughs> you know, way back on 60s. And it got to me thinking about Arena Cross, and they just reset their championships with six rounds to go. What's your opinion? What if we did something like that with our show? I'm all about it. I feel like uh, with Dungey controlling the series the way he has, uh, he's been phenomenal. So uh, I think it would be great to try a little... If they, if they flip the points or even some different versions of the main event, like the Monster Energy Cup, I think it throws some excitement, especially at the end of the year. Uh, and in terms of Arena Cross, I think it's a great series, and uh, it's really competitive, and it's cool to see some of those 
ideas that they have work. Uh, it's I think it's in Austin this week, which yeah, is close right. to uh, nearby my house. So my my family's going there <laughs> instead of Supercross <laughs> tonight. So it's uh, it's great to see it working and, and uh, how those Arena Grass guys uh, really make it work with the show. Oh, cool. Thanks for that. You know, and you've had a really long career. You've ridden for Factory Honda, you know, and, and you've been really successful and relatively healthy. But is this still as awesome as it was as when you began? And when you have opening ceremonies, tell us about that. Is it still awesome for you? Uh, the show itself, uh, maybe become, um, uh, become numb to it. But yeah. in terms of uh, racing, what I enjoy most is in the paddock, hanging yeah. out with the mechanics, the crew, setting up bikes like we talked about earlier, uh, having those relationships uh, with the engineers, and just racing. Uh, I like the off-the-bike stuff and practicing. The racing's cool, but after a while, you know, 17 rounds of it, you become numb. I think you guys can relate. I'm 32, <laughs> and uh, it's fun, but I don't do it for the fans of the opening ceremonies or anything like that. I, I like uh, the community and racing in the bikes. Well, and you talk about the fans. We are here in the Edwards Jones Dome on the big screen now, so I uh, want to give a shout-out to the fans that are watching hey, some of that on? time Wait, practicing guys. and stuff. Andrew Short's <laughs> on the show. But uh, yeah. we had some questions, uh, uh, some hashtags, uh, Race Day Live. We're going to get to those in a second. We want you to uh, answer a few of those questions. A lot of people came in and uh, were asking Andrew Short uh, Ted Arnold there, uh, he's asking you a question, Andrew. Yeah, is, is this Coach Sanji the drummer in a punk band once? What's going on with that? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Coach Sanji, he's my trainer, and uh, he's known to get a little crazy, so I'm sure he, uh, Ted there knows uh, Sanji. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. You guys got a good group down there with the Butler Brothers and BTO Sports and stuff, and you got Factory KTM. Tell us what it's like working with those guys in your team. It's great. Uh, KTM, you know, they put a lot of effort in Supercross. I really enjoy the new bike and working with the Red Bull team. But with BTO Sports, uh, it's a little less pressure, a, a great group of guys, and the passion's there, and maybe not as much uh, pressure, just expectations. So I enjoy the atmosphere, and, and we get the benefits of having a great bike with KTM, and we try to keep it light and fun and, and make the most on race day. Something I want to ask you, Andrew, you, you're uh, only winning that 450 class a few years back in Seattle. Uh, that was a great moment for you. I mean, you've worked hard. I remember when you first got the uh, East-West uh, uh, shootout when you were on a Suzuki riding for Paul Lindsay there, and you got that win. Uh, how do you compare those two? Uh, there's always highs and lows in racing, and you just try to enjoy uh, each moment. And 2012 seems like a, a, a long time ago. So uh, for me, I just try to live in the moment and realize that this uh, career of mine is not going to last forever, and especially now that I'm older. I uh, enjoyed tracks like tonight and the atmosphere and hanging out with you guys. You know, this <laughs> isn't going to be here forever. So uh, I realize I'm living my dream and uh, make the most of it. Well, we, cool. we have one more question, but I had one more question before that gets up. Where do we see Andrew Short in five years from now? I don't know. I, I love dirt bikes. Uh, there's a lot of places I like to go ride in Colorado and in the mountains and do different things. Uh, I'm pretty committed to Supercross right now, and my lifestyle doesn't necessarily uh, – let me get out there. So I have two kids that are getting older, and uh, they have a, they're have they full of excitement, you know, whatnot. And so I'd like to be at home a little more with them as well. But uh, at the moment, uh, I feel like, you know, we're all living a blessed life, and uh, to race Supercross is a dream come true, like I said. So I'll make the most of it until then and then see what the next chapter has in store for me. So you don't, you're not saying you're going to go racing again with the family, maybe or maybe not. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Who knows? And yeah. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, you know. Uh, right. I realize this is a great opportunity. All right, well, here's Ashley. She writes in, uh, do you think the whoops will stay uh, pretty tamed uh, all night? Yeah, we talked about the whoops earlier. Uh, they're relatively easy how they started, uh, but they're getting choppy and uneven, and they're getting the hook and cup in them. So you'll have to uh, watch the guys' bikes. They're going to get out of hand, especially as the night goes on, just because you're carrying so much speed in there, and they are uneven. And it's uh, going to be hard to get stopped for that right-hander. Well, Andrew, I tell you what, man, thanks for coming on the show. Good luck tonight. You know, Thank you. you're the whole shot master this year, and me and Jim did a piece down there to figure out one of the tricks that these guys do to get starts, and it has to do with the uh, whole shot device. So check it out. On this week's track feature, we're going to talk about one of the most important aspects of racing Supercross. It's getting a good start. And there's a lot that goes into getting a good start, right, Jim? Well, you know, you hear about it all the time. You know, Jeff Emig, you know, Fox Sports 1 broadcasts ourselves on Race Day Live. We always talk about how important it is to get a, a start in Supercross. And, you know, back in those days when I rode, we didn't have uh, such devices as a whole shot device. And it's kind of interesting nowadays because a lot of riders, you know, they'll set them up differently. If it's a tacky track, they want to collapse it maybe 140 millimeters down. If it's a, a hard, dry track, they'll want to put more weight on that rear end, so it might only collapse 100. Or, it, you know, for 
that people don't know millimeters, inches. You know, it's about an average of about a four inch collapse. And Adam Intignap, the man who runs that seven deuce deuce, was nice enough to come out here and, and just show us how this thing works. And, you know, a lot of people see the mechanics in the front of this thing. You got to remember, these are 50, 51 millimeter forks. This supercross suspension is stiff, so it takes two people to engage that whole shot device. And we're going to take a look at it. Well, here's what we were talking about, Andy. There's a little button right here that you got to hold up when you collapse the forks, and that's what it catches on right there. And then when you go into that first turn and you grab that front brake and disengages it so you can make that turn. Adam, why don't you jump up on there and let's see how we can do this now. All right, on two, one. There it is. It's engaged now. So you can see the bike sitting at a little bit of an angle and Adam like you talked about you know depending on the track surfaces you know you you want to have it collapsed a little bit more for a, a, yeah, a tackier here, track here in St. Louis it's going to be really tacky so we're going to have it uh it, we're going to have it much deeper I'm going to have it set probably at 120 millimeters which is about uh four and a quarter inches down on my forks uh somewhere like San Diego it's going to be really dry so I'll have it up maybe like a hundred millimeters or about four inches to get a little bit more weight on that rear wheel luckily I'm a bigger guy so uh that helps a little bit with the whole shot and uh yeah, no, if we didn't have this like you guys are talking about, it's it's almost um, impossible to get the whole shot. These 450s are putting down so much power, and uh, it's just one of those things that's needed. All right, well, let's see it disengage now. So when you run it into that first turn, you grab a handful of front brake, boom, it, it's disengaged now. Any chance of that thing getting hung up? Um, yeah, actually, I've had it hang up uh, once before, but it was with a different type of whole shot device. Um, it gets a little sketchy. The front end's locked down, and uh, the forks are really, really stiff, and it doesn't handle quite right, especially with these big, steep jumps. It's, uh, it's one of those scary things that you just hope doesn't happen, and uh, thankfully for all our mechanics and uh, the Good Works Connection whole shot device, it's, uh, it's happened at perfect every single time this year. Now there's how the whole shot device works. All those guys are going to try to use that to get that $1,500 supercostlive.com check for getting the first guy around the first turn. There's a lot more to getting a whole shot than just a simple whole shot device. So join us next week. We're going to tell you more about it. Hey, and coming on the show is James Dakotas, the Ripa, man. Welcome to Race Day Live. Yeah, thank you for having me on. Good to see you, Jimmy. Hey, man, you've been fast all day so far in qualifying. The track looks like it's working out in your favor. Tell us about it. Yeah, that uh, that last practice was pretty good for me. I was seventh. Um, I didn't really get a clean lap in that I, I think I should have had in. So for that, I, I think I struggled a little bit out there. But I really like this track. It, it's pretty basic and easy. But as it gets rutted up, it's, it's going to be a tough track for sure. Talk a little bit about we hear a lot of riders say I, I really didn't get a clean lap. How hard is it and difficult out there? I know sometimes you got the yellow flag. You, you got a, a red flag. They stop them. You got the uh, yep. white flag with the red cross. Very hard to lay down a fast lap time. It, it's tough. Sometimes guys are down or someone's usually setting up before the finish line to get ready for a lap. And that's me and Martin came into it in that last practice. And that's kind of what, what jacked me up on my fast lap. But uh, overall, it's, it, it's just staying out of trouble, you know, picking your points. If you're trying to do two or three in a row, you kind of just got to do them whether there's someone there or not. But if you're going for one, usually give yourself enough room and do what you got to do. Well, James, you're up there in the top five in the A practice, racing against guys on full factory teams, and you're not on a factory team. But tell us about how you're getting to the races and your Harley-Davidson sponsorship. Tell us about your crew. Well, yeah, Riverside Harley-Davidson's an absolute huge uh, help for me and my team. And then uh, Trail Jesters, also uh, South of the Border MX, Fox Racing. I got Rhino Power. I have awesome, awesome sponsors on board with me. And, you know, without them, I would never even possibly be out here. So... Just got to give it up to them and just trying to show these factory guys that I belong on one of these teams. And it's hard when the main event results aren't where you want them to be. But, you know, I, I know I can podium and I'm a podium guy. So I think if I just keep keep positive and keep doing what I can do with it, then I'll get where I want to be. Not not bad this year. I mean, you're sitting sixth in the points here and you've had some uh, fifths and sixths and things like that. But what it's what's it going to take? To obviously, you know, we we talk about the start. We saw the uh, the piece we did on the whole shot device yeah. and things like that. But uh, when are we going to see you back on that podium? It it's got to be a start, like you said. It's all that it comes down to the start. You know, tonight if I get a start, the lap times are close, and I run a solid 15 laps, I can I can be one of the top three or at least get it in the top five and get some more fifths and fourths and just. You know, I think I'm a little bit behind Bogle and Musquin and them, and I still got a lot of things to work on to get to their level. But I think I'm right there with them, and that's that's kind of what's been a big success for me this year is always being the next guy, you know. So when they're looking for a guy, I'm the I'm the next guy right there with those factory guys, and 
it's been huge. I have Gary Bailey. He helps me out every weekend, and he's been coming, and it's like they see his, his winning mindset where if I'm third on the board, I'm, like, doing jumping jacks, and he's like, dude, what are you doing? That's that's not first. You got right. more to go. And to have someone like that for me in my corner is – is everything for my success because that's that's what I need is someone pushing me to that third's not good enough. First is what we want. What about JoJo Keller? Does he still <laughs> push you a little bit? I know you're good friends with JoJo Keller, and uh, we used to ride and compete a lot. But but JoJo's a big fan of yours. He is, yeah. JoJo's been a he's been a hero of mine since I was man five years old. He's the reason I started riding dirt bikes. Him and my dad would just would just throw me, and I just ride, and it would all work <laughs> out good. So it's like JoJo K is a very good guy, and he's always taking good care of me. Well, we got a couple of photos of you here. I think number 49 there, but uh, <laughs> you know who that is, right? It's Jim Hollywood Holly. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I had 49. That was one of my national All right, numbers. all right. There, there you are, are the river side. For side by side there. Ask JoJo about number 49. He'll tell you about him. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard all about him. <laughs> Well, James, you know, you say you're, you're, you're getting close to Marvin and, and Bogle and those guys in, on the track, but you're beating those guys in social media. You have a ton of fans. We're on the Jumbotron right now. So wave to all your fans out there. You know, it's got to feel know. good to have such a good following and stuff and keep you pumped up. It does, and I think a lot of it goes back to that two-stroke video I made that's got over a million views <laughs> on YouTube. So many – if I had a dollar for everyone that came <laughs> up to me and said they wanted to see me race a two-stroke, I'd be rich. I'll tell you that. <laughs> but uh, it's, it is good, you know, and I think in my interviews and stuff that I do with Racer X and everybody and even on here, I don't – kind of fluff things around if something needs to be said i'm going to say it whether it has to do with the racing the payout the the track i'm always voice my opinion because i'm one of the guys out there and i believe that feld and all the guys need to know what we're thinking because we're the ones racing the track yeah well i mean you're one of those guys where if it's black and white there's no gray in between no. you're going to call it I'm gonna call a spade it. a spade well let's put you on the spot you know we got it a is. split lane right here and it's pretty gnarly but i think to me it looks like it's working out pretty good what it do you is. think i think uh the inside's a little faster it's a little bit trickier yeah. so it comes down to which one you can execute 15 laps better but i think for right now if you can do that quad that eli was doing and then go outside that's going to be the be the line you think you can do a quad on a 250f you I think, think you think so. i was torque? the first guy to do it last weekend so if anyone's gonna right. do it I'm, I'm the guy <laughs> to do it but i mean you know i'm not trying to crash out too early here you know i got this weekend and then i got three weeks to prepare for jersey and you know i'm just trying to just keep focus on supercross not get too far ahead of myself and just if there's a quad and i think it's doable I'll try it, but if not, Send I'm going to take it easy. Well, that's interesting. You're already thinking about East Rutherford, New Jersey. I mean, that that's a big one that you really want to shine there in MetLife Stadium. It's, it's huge. That's that's basically my home race. You know, Massachusetts is, isn't New York, but it's all the hometown fans are there. And, you know, last year I got to win that heat, and that felt really good. But just didn't 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 capitalize on the main event at all there. So just, just trying to get a little bit better and go there and podium this year. All right, we have a fan question for you all right. there. Yeah, what do you use differently this year than last year that's rewarded you with physical fitness? I'm going to have to say the, the – <laughs> yeah. <laughs> First of all, using Rhino Power and his supplements have helped me out huge this year. And for me, it's, it's off the bike. You know, I never got into the cycling stuff that Alden and those guys do and, and road biking and mountain biking. And, you know, Max and Leo, they're, they're twins from up by me in Massachusetts, and they, they got me into it this summer. They showed me what it takes to, to be a champion. And, you know, it, I've only been doing the cycling for six months, and – it's going to take a year or two to get where Dungey and those guys are at. But, you know, I think it with time I'll get up there with them. And for me, the biggest thing has been off-the-bike training for sure. You know, you mentioned Ryan Dungey and all the guys that ride the 450. As soon as you're done with your 250A practice, I, I see you guys, you jump up in the stands here, and you're really looking at those guys uh, in that 450 class and the lines that they're taking. Yeah, that's – that's Gary always quizzes me on that. Did <laughs> you go watch 450 guys? You better go watch them because – you know, it's, I'm trying to compare myself these days to the best guys. You know, if I'm yeah. two seconds off Dungy, then that's two seconds that I can gain, you know. And I just try to be realistic with it. I know I'm not on Dungy's level right now, but I think in the next couple of years I can be one of those guys like how Weston did it. He came out of nowhere, and now he's he's a solid guy up there every weekend. You know, that's what it comes down to is confidence and fitness. You know, we all can ride a bike pretty good, but if you're not in shape, 20 laps with that high heart rate is – is something that a lot of people can't do. Well, James, you've had a couple chances, you know, with the big teams on Geico Honda, and the luck wasn't there, you know. And now you kind of have your own gig going right now. It looks yep. like you're getting good results. You're having fun. Do you want another one of those rides? I mean, it's, well, that might be yeah. a dumb question, but, you know, how are you going to get that done? What I'm, I'm going to go out this week and after this weekend and kind of just call the teams myself. You know, I don't Great. have an agent or anything like that, and I don't think I'm as big enough as a, you know, where Ryan and, you know, Jeremy Martin are to, to have an agent and have to deal with that, but I'm getting there. So yeah. for me, it's like I just do like my interviews. I go up and I tell them how I've been riding and what I think is 
you know, I right now I think I could be on a team, and, it, you know, I think that my results have shown that. But I think I still need a little bit more for someone like Mitch to want to pluck me out of the bunch and say, this is the guy, this is my guy that's going to win. But, you know, I think with a little fine-tuning and all the – for my me and my team, it's so huge what I do for the privateers and being able to run yeah. with those guys. But I do all the sponsor calls. My girlfriend helps me a little bit, but I do mostly everything. So that's the stress of doing all that, setting up the hotels. That's the stuff that weighs on me. And I think if I can get on a team and get away from all that drama and just focus on me and – less distractions, then I can get up there with those guys and be one of them. Well, and the good thing about it, you've had a taste of that, uh, you know, with the Geico Honda team yep. where a, a lot of the guys are, you know, doing all that. You have someone booking your hotels and things like that. So you know, uh, yep. you know, how positive that is to have that in your corner. It's huge. Having the whole team behind you that believe you can win, it's like, it's everything. It's so mental in the sport. You know that. Well, let alone it's the everything. bike, you know, the machine itself. Well, I'm sure you have a good bike and of stuff, course. but you've had a taste of what that factory one's of like. Of course. But, uh, you know, I watch footage. I compare to Musquin. The way I ride the bike isn't as good as Marvin, and that's why I'm a second or two off him. You know, it's not the bike. It, the bike, for sure, would, might give me a little confidence in here and there, but, you know, I could win on my bike if I was riding it better. So, you know, it's, it's definitely the hardest part about the privateer is the stress of building the team and doing all that stuff. But overall, the... Being on a factory team is the goal, and that's kind of where I want to be next year. That, that is where I want to be next year, not kind of. Yeah. <laughs> well, what about this summer? Are you going to go race in the Nationals? I am. I'm going to do uh, five or six rounds, depending on money. I'm just going to tackle the East Coast Series and just kind of do the best that I can. I think it's better to do six and perform at six than do 12 and kind of not have the right equipment and be traveling in the camper and doing all that. So I'm just going to focus on five or six and just do the best with what I can and think if I have good outdoor results, then that's where the teams are worried about me is in the outdoors so if i can show them i got the fitness then i can yeah. i can get on a team get the whole shots and send it man exactly that's right that's all we can do well thanks james for coming on race no day problem. live man thanks good luck tonight we'd like to see you on the podium i'd like to see myself there too I, i'd like to you know race day live would like to give you a thousand dollars for that whole shot in the main event tonight can you go out there and do that do for that. us all right well, well we'll give you a thousand bucks all right all right folks well we caught up with mmi top tech mechanic last weekend he had a really cool story so check it out Andy Boyer with Race Day Live, presented by Amsoil. This is this week's MMI Top Tech Mechanic, Mike and Jermaine. Wow, you've had a heck of a week, man. Tell us about breaking down and what you had to go through. Well, I went to go leave Indy on Monday, and I uh, got like three miles from the track, and the thing broke down, the truck, and I uh, had to make a bunch of phone calls, try and get it fixed. I got it in the shop Monday night. They started working on it Tuesday. Got it done Wednesday morning. Started heading up here. Got like 30 miles out from here and the thing broke down on me again. So I uh, made some more phone calls. I had a tow truck guy come out. He started helping me look around and luckily he uh, he found a problem. It was a loose plug, so he just plugged it back in. The thing fired up, so I just drove straight here. Um, got the bike and everything ready and now we're racing, so. Well, that's going the extra mile, man. You got $1,000 for your pocket and your rider got 11th place tonight, Kyle Chisholm. Yeah. Pretty good weekend after the end of all that mess. Oh yeah, that's our best finish of the year, so we're pretty pumped. Um, He's riding pretty good right now. He's finally getting comfortable on the bike. He, uh, we got so such a late start on everything that he hasn't had much time on the bike. So now we got some time on it, and he's getting comfortable. So we're starting to see better results. Well, MMI really appreciates effort like yours. Congratulations on your $1,000. That's Mikey Jermaine with this week's MMI Top Tech Mechanic. And welcome back. And now I'm standing next to two legends because seven-time AMA <laughs> national champion Jeff Ward just showed up. Welcome to Race Day Live, Thank man. you. Appreciate it. Good to see you, Jeff. Jimmy. Well, you know, let's kick it off right now in your current role. You know, you're working with Cole Seeley, and he's on fire right now. You guys are gelling together. Tell us about it. Um, well, I've known Cole since on 80s. My kids raced with Cole. We've stayed at, he stayed at my house when he was kids. I helped him ride before. So, um, you know, I did my own racing for so long, and then kind of last year, I, you know, I kind of was thinking about I helped some amateur kids out my son races so i'm always at the track and then it's um brandon my son's good friend with jason anderson and yeah. anderson asked what's your dad doing can you help you know so it kind of started i'm like yeah i'll help jason out and started going you know and and then uh right away he's you know running up front so it was pretty cool doing that and it was kind of bittersweet because cole is such like almost like family and I'm, they're yeah. competing against each other right. for the championship and i'm working with jason and jason's a great kid because i've known him as well through all the mini bike stuff so it just kind of started off there, and then at the end of the year, Cole approached me and 
Jason was kind of talking with Alden a little bit, and he was going to live in Florida. I'm going, well, how's that going to work? And then Cole's like, well, I could use you here. So it just kind of worked out perfect. And That's awesome. It's yeah. uh, I think it really helps out with, you know, dealing with the stuff that's going to come with the full season and where to be at when you go in and not overtrain and, you know, peak at the first race because you can only start – it's hard to keep that sure. level of – kind of build into it especially as a rookie yeah and he's been doing a great job and he's got a lot of confidence which is tough to get well and the other thing too you know something that you know i found out when working with riders like you're doing now is as riders ourselves when we were racing we really didn't know what the the mechanics and the people behind the scenes you know helping us what they went through and you're getting a chance to experience that now with uh you know cole seeley getting it you know he's had three podiums he's had a couple seconds he's sitting fourth in the points and you're seeing that reward and you're going you know what i'm helping somebody else uh, achieve their dream yeah i mean you know you know as a you know as a racer that there's so much that goes on but you're focused so much on racing it's uh it's tough to uh realize what really gets done during the week and going on because you're focused so much on your physical health and right. and riding stuff so colt's pretty um, focused right there on that mountain bike yeah we do a lot of mountain bike he also we also work with brian lopes uh yeah. he helps Cole training on the bicycling we do He's a lot gnarly. of sprint stuff yeah he, <laughs> he he can't keep up with him on short sprint stuff so uh it really helps Cole out a lot and um, we get out he lives in laguna beach now i'm in newport seven miles from each other i can bike there we can go do the stuff from the track so it it's really working out well, and um, it's really fun to see somebody, uh, you know, progress like he has. Well, Jeff, you were known as a trainer throughout your career. You, you know, hard nose, and you trained really hard. How are these guys training now compared to when you were doing it? Are they training harder or just as hard, or, or where's that where's that level? Well, it's a learning process of the athlete, too. There's always a weakness that you need to work on. I w I'm short, so I need to work on strength. So I did a lot of strength stuff to help out. Endurance, I seem to be always pretty good at it with my cycling and running and I did triathlon, so I always seemed to be able to hold that high heart rate. But it was the physics of it. When a bike swaps out, there's a certain <laughs> physics of strength that's going to stop it or stop you from going down. And if you don't have that, you're going down. So I really had to work on that. And Cole's got a lot of leverage, way better 450 rider because of that and his style. Yeah. And we just kind of work on things that he needs to work on. Endurance-wise, the guy's awesome. I mean, the guy can mountain bike, um, strength. You know, he could probably, the biggest thing, he could probably work on just a little strength. And that's getting him through a year, whole year of you know, growing on that 450, which we seem to be doing so far. You, you know, I had an interesting thing. You know, I, I think that Honda did a good thing when they pulled from their satellite teams, and Cole's had some experience, uh, you know, in that 450 and had some great results last year uh, in Indy at a podium there. But how do, how do you uh, uh, prepare him for the, the 17 rounds of Supercross? Because, you know, the East Coast, West Coast, those guys only go eight rounds, and it's so difficult to, to, to carry on a whole full season of racing. I don't think the riding part's the hard part. I think it's more mentally because it, it keeps going on. Even though they were done West Coast, man, they jumped into the outdoor stuff and were riding more yeah. four days a week and five instead of three and traveling. The traveling wears you down. It's, it's just that mentality of being in a championship so long and not getting ahead of yourself. You know, now it's starting to count down. You can see where he's at. He could finish third in the series, second if Eli messes up. So for that, that comes into another level now of trying to, to finish out the season strong. And then now there's no window for the outdoor. So we're trying to fit that in. He doesn't want to overtrain, you know, because you don't want to come in tired. It's getting hot in California. So yeah. there's you, the off season is where you get your base. And that's what we worked on. We worked hard. He was tired, yeah. worked hard. And then we tapered way back. And now he's riding at the Saturday's event, wanting to ride and feeling up. You right. know, instead of coming in like, oh, man, I'm, I'm worn out from the week. And the outdoors are going to be tough to fit that in because we've never done it. We have another question here for you. That's a pretty good one right there. You know, do you miss racing those Indy cars in the Indianapolis 500? Well, I didn't until I went to Indy last two weeks ago. <laughs> 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 Saw all my buddies and guys that ran my teams. And There's a uh, nice photo of you there. Yeah, you finished Foyt, up second AJ one Foyt's here. deal. That was in uh, uh, 2000. And, um, yeah, but yeah, you got to look at it as, you know, even if I went there, I did really well there. I, I liked the track. But these guys have been racing. They've been racing three or four races before they get there. They've made all their mistakes. Yeah. They know the cars. I would get in there, and it's just not going to happen. Start I'm gonna, from scratch. You're just going to make a mistake. You're yeah. going to come in the pits too hot. You're going to do something wrong, and it's just – it sounds fun. Yeah. But when you get in – when then you seat yourself in that car, you're kind of like, oh, I made yeah. a bit off a little more. I, I did it yeah. in 2005 because I, I was done with uh, Ganassi in 2002, a couple of years off, and then uh, Tony George called me. They had a team with his son, Ed Carpenter, and uh, stepson, and they wanted somebody that had experience to help out, and I'm like, cool, I get to go back. But we had the motors weren't good. They were Toyotas. Hondas were killing it. You know, in the back of the pack, it was just not fun. Yeah. And it was like, it was, it was 
just wasn't what I expected, so I've kind of already been there and done that. And Not as fun as almost winning it. You yeah. almost won that yeah. thing. Yeah, you know, what would that have meant to you to win the Indianapolis 500? Well, I don't know what it would have meant because I yeah. didn't do it. Yeah. But <laughs> <laughs> I think it would have meant a lot. It still means yeah. a lot just and, going and there. second is just <laughs> as good in my book, uh, you know, yeah. for so, winning. Uh, I like to see motorcycle guys make that transition to four. I know Eddie Lawson tried, you know, and stuff. Here's, Here's another yeah. uh, win for the fastest uh, qualifier. Would oh, you like to see that come back in the, in the day? I mean, we used to have those kind of Yeah, you get a little extra money. Yeah. I'll give some effort. I mean, back then we uh, we didn't have like the time practice and all that. It was right. just like you had heat races, and then you get you know for being the fastest lap. But um, I don't know. These guys would always want more money, I guess, for going. But they go fast anyway. But yeah, well. it's uh it's pretty cool to have that. Since we've transitioned to back in the day, you know, you won the eight the eight 1985 Supercross Championship, and that's what I call the most competitive se you know season we've ever had. Glover, Bailey, Johnson on down the list and I kind of compared that to this season you know with the who's next and yeah. you know was was I uh, you know correct in my comparison there you know because 85 was gnarly and this year at the beginning of the season was was one of the most competitive we've seen well there was a lot of champions in there at the uh. time that had won championships you know so uh yeah they those guys know what it takes and it wasn't like you're racing one guy or two guys for a championship there's like five guys that have already done it yeah and um it was my first year, so yeah, it was the two moto format yep. that year, yep. which was really strange. <laughs> um, so you had two chances of going down in the first turn, or two chances of having Bike a bad failure, one bad race. Yeah. Two nights, you had a you could get a DNF and lose 25 points, because you know how hard it is to take a start in Supercross and sure. make it without getting yeah. landed on or <laughs> a circumstance going on. So so it doubled the the, the chances of having a bad race, but um, it was a um, competitive field. Cool, man. Well, hey, it's been an honor. Thanks for coming on Race Day Live. We know it. you're busy. Thank you got to go get no, back I'm to good. Cole. But, uh, yeah, we have a, a Chuck Sun coming up. We have a word from our sponsors right now. Stay tuned. Yeah, welcome back to the show. And join us here. We have another very special guest, Chuck Sun, man. Welcome to Race Day Live. Thanks for being here, Good Andy. to see you, Chuck. Jim. You know, I want to get started. You're on the 1981 Motocross and Nation Trophy to Nations Championship. You know, the first one America won. And that was just w the most crazy undertaking and awesome thing that we had done with American racing. We've lost that thing the last couple of years. And don't do, what are you going to say to those kids when they go to try to win it this year? Well, well, first of all, um, I was I had the good fortune to be on the team in 78. Yeah. Uh, I was riding in Finland and had done well with a couple of GPs. They said, come on down. So... There's um, a photo of you and O'Mara well, there. That was in 81. Yeah. Yeah. O'Mara and Laporte and Hanson were on the team. So I got a sample of what it was like. And and Hannah had this big battle with Mikola. I was actually second in one of the motos. But Burgett broke his collarbone, and Tommy Croft had bike problems. We almost won it that year. Why? So it was kind of a heartbreaker to not win it then. To, so to come back and have everybody doubting us yeah. and to haul out a win uh, was really exciting, and it's a great part of of the history to be a part of yeah. now fast forward uh, i had the good opportunity to go to lomo belgium mm -hmm. and i knew it was going to be really tough and it was just a function of experience the sand is really unique there uh, you can't practice on any sand like that in the world except you're in lomo mm -hmm. it, it's really like cement um, they fought really hard and uh, you know barsha did incredible with a third place but it was just not enough for the experience that they had every yeah. every weekend, week out in that sand. And it's double-edged for me. I, obviously, I, I want to see the U.S. win. Yes. But I want the whole world to see the level of competition around the different countries that they can bring to the table. Uh, and, you know, keep in mind... If one team dominates the whole time, uh, you know, what do we have for competition? Right. So it really enhances uh, when they get back to winning form, and they will. They'll just have the right combination, the right tracks. Very well put. And they'll win again for sure. Awesome. Chuck, I want to ask you the, the resurgence of Husqvarna, because I know you were a factory Husqvarna rider before you went and uh, won your outdoor championship with Honda, but the resurgence of Husqvarna with Jason Anderson and, and Zach Osborne, Martin Davalos and everything, you got to be happy. I see the smile on well, your face a little <laughs> bit right now that you're happy Husky's back. When a rider goes from privateer to factory ride, and that's where I was when I rode Husqvarna, that rite of passage stays with you forever. And there's so many people that got their start on Husqvarna's and looked up to the first world champions of our sport with Husqvarna. It, it's got a warm spot in the heart, and they've really triggered that and it's been really fun working with them. 
I, I think I saw you saw that picture I sent you. Uh, we might have it up there. Uh, we'll, we're looking we'll see for the photo, and, gets and I it found up, yeah. something in the archives. Right down the road here was a Trans Am, mm -hmm. Trans Am in St. Peter's, just out of town. Now, they do two things. They're really looking at promoting the sport of motocross. So they blocked off a district in the financial. Well, that, that's not the oh, photo. Whoa, whoa. I think we have another one after that. Well, we dug that up there oh, thanks, back in the old days Jim. in Oregon. Appreciate that. I, I know Dan Nelson yeah. would appreciate that, yeah. Mr. Volcano. He'd like that photo there. That, that's funny. There's there one go. of you at Barnett when you were riding on the factory Honda. But we have one more, I think, that's going to come okay. up here. And okay. uh, that's going to be you on the Husky that you were talking about here just down the road. There it is there. Well, that Husky shot there was from St. Louis as well. Cool. And it was during the Trans Am 250 class. But they had us ride around the track without our helmets <laughs> so the spectators could see who we were. Right. And that was part of their marketing strategy. And that was on Husky back in the day. And uh, it was a lot of fun. It's good memories. Uh, it, I, I ride a 250 Husky now. I ride one of the two strokes. I, I go back and forth. I like them all, but I do a little bit of motocross and I like to do, ride the trails up in Idaho. And uh, I love to come to the races and hang with the legends and heroes. Uh, you know, a sport actually is only about as rich as, as the history. Sure. And they are able to show the richness of our history, the Hannah, the tripes, and going back in time uh, you know, that these guys are following in the footsteps of. And it's quite a really nice uh, display of what took place in our sport. Well, well, and you mentioned that Alex Morales does a great job and Mike Owen there. And, uh, uh, but, you know, it's like Cooperstown, but it's here each and every weekend at Supercross and the outdoors. Well, and, and this was a special weekend in St. Louis. Uh, the Triumph Dealer has a restaurant and a moto museum that we went to last night. And today, a longtime resident uh, who owns many car dealerships, one of the first medalists of ISDE, Dave Munganest, oh. who passed away, uh, we went to his museum. I mean, old Rickman Matisse, early Husqvarna, early Penton, before wow. KTM. Wow. Was, and you could just stay in there all day. I just got here because I was <laughs> hanging out at the museum. So St. Louis has a, a really rich history of motorcycles and motocross. And it's great to be back here after 30 years. It's uh, a lot of fun. Well, and I'm glad you brought uh, Dan Nelson out, too. I mean, I know yeah. how he enjoys. I've had a chance to ride with Dan and Robert Hansen up in, uh, you know, uh, up in uh, Virginia City and Reno and all those. we got to get you on one of those trail rides. I, absolutely. I love to trail riding. <laughs> and, yet, you know, I ran into Dan at an open house at, at a KTM dealer, of all things. And we have something in common. We all ride. So we ventured into a new business called iTracks, and Dan's introduced it to the auto industry. It's theft recovery. And hey, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah. It is? Yeah. We needed that, and I'm going to go here because our producer uh, what, it, it works for Feld. Our rental car got stolen here in St. Louis with right. all of well, our bags. See, if you had iTracks, you'd be <laughs> back in Tell we us need about that. this theft yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm going to be introducing it to the motorcycle industry, and uh, – it's a lot of fun to walk into dealerships and talk and reminisce about old times and look at the new bikes. Um, anything that I could ride is great. And, you know, also a good friend of mine, Scott Cox, they run the bike show. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had a good time. I got to go to uh, Turin, Italy, and race with Brock Glover. Cool. And, you know, you know, we had some scraps back in the day. And so it was good to hang out with him. But Brock, he was training and practicing. Ah, Brock's yeah. a competitor. <laughs> you he, know, he's not going to get on a motorcycle. He's, unless he's really ready strong. To go. So I, I expect to hear a couple nice little jabs on their bike radio <laughs> show that they do on Sunday morning. Uh, that'll be a lot of fun. Well, Chuck, you spent some time battling with this guy here. Do you have a Jim Hawley story for us? <laughs> you, know, you know, Jim was the up and coming rider, and with your brother Ron Sun and. and and Jim was, was kind of a powerhouse. You know, he's still well-built, but he was really strong. And all I remember, I, you know, I never liked to uh, ever have an excuse. Yeah. <laughs> and, oh, this guy hit me or that happened. Well, it means you still lost. <laughs> and Jim was one of those guys that I didn't want to have an episode with because he was <laughs> such a powerhouse and he'd be coming in strong. So, I, I, I mean, I do recall that much. Yeah. But it well, was, sp speaking about your brother, Ron, what's he doing these days? Uh, Ron is up in Oregon. Uh, he had a little bit of a heart issue. Oh. Uh, it's taking his medication, getting back on top of Good things. Good for him. And uh, he's got a 450 in his garage. 
and he gets it out on the parents' property and rides and has a great time. Good. Here's we our got question, a question here. For yeah, it's a great question, oh. actually. Was the racing harder at that time when you were going? Well, let me start by saying this. Um, <laughs> 40 minutes plus two laps. <laughs> yeah. 45-minute um, <laughs> motos. You said a lot there. <laughs> I, I, you know, um, racing is all always difficult. These guys have a tremendous challenge. It's a shorter moto, so that means they go 110% the whole time. Um, I still race. I can't. It's amazing how physically demanding this sport is. It's a great sport. It's very challenging. Um, I enjoyed the 40-minute motos. Um, you could introduce some strategies. Um, you could back off. You could not go. F you could not go full speed. You could not go full speed. So. You're still, I mean, I, I see on Saturdays oh, at REM racing man. and stuff, yeah. you're still riding a little bit. Yeah. yeah. I, I did a desert race in Gosh, Nevada two weeks ago. <laughs> that, that'll do and, it. And we had a little bit of rain, and it was a 100-miler, and it, it's just fantastic. You, you just made Andy feel bad. because I Andy's got this got little, little bitty blister. He had, yeah. a, he had a little blister on <laughs> here. Oh. I said, no, what do you no. Call that? That's <laughs> really not a blister. I wasn't going to say anything, man. That's a blister. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cool. So you finished Very in the top 20? Yeah, yeah, I did. I, um, you know, I was happy to, you know, 100 riders, a lot of kids. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's a funny story because I go into Carter Motorsports and I, a, a police officer followed me in there on a, on a motorcycle. And I go, uh-oh, I'm going through my head. What's he going <laughs> to get me on? And he goes, uh, Mr. Son, I go, and I said, this instinct to run. But I stayed and he said, <laughs> yeah, I was... I raced you. I was the guy that won. We had a battle, and he beat me. Oh. He's training for a triathlon. He was in really good shape, shape, and uh, it was really cool to see. You know, it was cool that I didn't get arrested, <laughs> and but it was cool to race against a, a police officer there in Las Vegas. So it, it's always a good time. Motorcycles, you know, everywhere you go, popping into bike shops, and <laughs> but uh, you know, I. Some of my favorite riding now is on the trails. Yeah, it's yeah. enjoyable for me. I, I ride myself a lot on the trails. I, I really don't want to ride a track, but just go out and enjoy myself out in the desert on the trails with my buddies. That's it. You, you stay fit. It's kind of a meditation. Uh, yeah, it's, they keep telling me that's coming. I'm still riding the track and stuff, but uh, I kind of want to go to the trails myself, I think. Just slow down a little bit. And, well, you and do just, both. You do yeah. both. Yeah. I mean, I, I still get drugged down to Glen Helen with the MXA guys. And, um, you know, I enjoy it all. But uh, the family and out in the out in the trails is just fantastic. And I enjoy going to Europe, too, the, the Italy and the Farley Castle. So, cool. anyway, good having me, guys. Well, hey, Chuck, thanks for Chuck, coming on. Chuck, it. it. feels like a lesson yeah, right here. I've just been hard. learning all this great information from you. But uh, it's awesome, you know. And, Stay with us, folks. we got Denny Stevenson coming up, but for now we had an interview with Chris Bloss, who's currently leading the uh, Amsoil Arena Cross Series. And we're here with Chris Bloss from the Babbitts Kawasaki Monster Energy Amsoil team. Man, uh, you guys are in Austin, Texas. How much fun have you guys had in the Arena Cross Tour this year? You've been all over the country to some new cities, and it has to be a good time. Yes, yeah, definitely a great time. We went to, like you said, we go to a lot of cool cities like New Orleans last weekend. Got to go sightseeing there because I've never been there. And uh, it's been a blast so far. I'm really looking forward to the last five rounds. Well, I bet you are. You're leading the points again, man. But uh, early in the season, you cracked off some wins and then had some pretty gnarly crashes. It seems like you're over those now and got everything together. Your bike's hooked up. And now you're leading the points again after they reset the championship. How are things looking for you? Yeah, things are good. Like you said, I'm leading the points, uh, I believe, by three points. So yep. it should be good. Hopefully all my crashes are out of the way. I had some really bad ones early on and in the middle of the season. But we're all healed up now and, you know, really looking forward to these races and the race for the championship. Now, it looks like some of your stiffest competition is going to come from your own team with Jacob Hayes and uh, Matt Gerke. You know, and then you got Kyle Regal, who's also been hot at certain points in the season, too. Who do you really see as your stiffest competition? It looks like you guys have a, a bunch of parity at the front of the pack. Yeah, there's definitely – there's a lot of people that can win. There's probably five guys at any moment that can win. And it's uh, – you know, I got my teammates, you know, like you said, Gerke and Hayes, and then you got Faith and Regal on the Huskies. It's yeah. it's definitely some tough competition, and it's uh, – there's definitely not any slouches here in Arena Cross. So just going to take staying out of trouble and getting good starts and to uh, – in order to win this championship. We'll talk about the championship. You know, it's it's a big deal winning that Arena Cross Championship. It has a lot of bonus money. How important it would it be to you? And what how how what would it be like to win this championship, man? 
Oh, it'd be awesome to win a championship. It's uh, not so much about the money, but it's more about my own personal goals and stuff like that. So it's uh, something I've been wanting to do for a while. The past couple of years, I've been trying to put this together with Team Babbitts, and it's uh, fi finally came together. I couldn't be happier and just really looking forward to uh, hopefully winning this championship. You know, you've had a long, successful career, and uh, talk about your team with Team Babbitts. You know, is that a, that's pretty much a full factory effort, isn't it? Yeah, they they are the premier team in here in Arena Cross, and it's uh, it you know with Kawasaki, Monster, Amsoil backing us, and Kawasaki, it's uh, it's a top notch team, and it's like I said, it's the premier team, so I couldn't be you know any happier to be on anyone else's team. Well, let's switch gears a little bit, and uh, we love watching you guys race. Uh, you just start the broadcaster coming out on television, but over here in the Edward Jones Dome in St. Louis, what are your picks tonight? Who do you think is going to win over here in, in St. Louis? Oh man, I think uh, I I think you can't go wrong with Ryan Dungey. Uh, I think Tomac will have some confidence now going into this. I was a big Canard fan, and uh, but obviously he's hurt now. But um, you know, I, I think either either Dungey or Tomac are going to take it tonight. Cool, Chris. Well, thank you for joining us, man. We're going to want to wish you a lot of luck this weekend in Austin, Texas. Good luck going that championship, and uh, hope you hopefully you guys put on a good show. Yeah, thanks. I appreciate it. All right, man. Thank you. And hey, we're back here inside the Edward Jones Dome. And joining us right now, 1990 East Coast Supercross champion, one of my heroes, man, Danny Stevenson. Welcome to the show. Good to see you, Boom Boom. Good to see you. Good to see you, Hollywood. <laughs> Long time ago. Yeah. Boom 25 what? years ago. What's yeah. Boom Boom all about? Well, uh, he's got a couple well, nicknames. When he ran <laughs> the arena cross, well, when he was, he was riding arena cross. It, 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 and there's Knock Knock. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> knock Knock, he just capped you a little bit easy. Yeah, boom Boom. He, good, yeah. He, he, it's he, funny. I, uh, I, I started my pro career with Race with you, Jimmy, and Ultra Cross, and I kind of wrapped up my pro career with, it, with Andy and Arena Cross. So it's a, ni it's a nice sitting right now, for sure. <laughs> you know, let's go back to that moment. 1990, you're fixing to win the 125 East Coast Championship. Marvin Muskin, what's he going through? That's a lot of pressure. You know, it was, uh, you know, you, yeah. you, we grew up like as kids together, racing yeah. mini bikes, and uh, all of a sudden you just get thrust into this moment, and you don't really... I don't think you kind of, I don't think you really realize what you're, what you're going through. I mean, you've been through a lot. You've been sure. around the world. Yeah. You've been through a lot. Yeah. It just kind of it overwhelms you, but you don't know it. So you just do it because that's yeah. all you know. That's all you know. So you just go yeah. out and race. You win. And I remember when I was winning, it, it was just it's just normal. Yeah. You know. But then you then you turn pro, go to 250 class, and yeah. you're getting your butt crushed, <laughs> and you're like. Man, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I forgot how easy it was. <laughs> but something that was interesting when you won your championship, you got a, a chance to experience like I did with our fathers. I mean, our fathers were mechanics of ours. Yeah, I mean, uh, for sure. I mean, my dad's my best friend, and for us to have the experience together was amazing. You know, uh, we, I just did that uh, racer story three on three, discussing about him being gone, and for him to leave because he was always around, took care of it, like your dad, your yeah. dad. But when he, when I turned pro. He left, yeah. went on the road. So all of a sudden, I'm, I'm home alone. Yeah. <laughs> what do I, you know, I'm used to him in my corner coaching me, sure. yelling at me, berating me. Get out of bed, Danny. Let's yeah, go run. So all of a sudden, like, all of a sudden, I'm alone. <laughs> <laughs> I should get my sh ass together. Yeah. And that was my friend Chris Hunter. You know, he, yeah. uh, he took care of me. He was my friend. He took care of my bikes. And you, we, you find people in your corner that, 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 that motivate you. I mean, yeah. you don't, we don't need that, but oh sometimes. Oh, boy. Check we, that out. Yeah. Yeah, look at that Who, old picture right there. Who's next to you there? There's Wind Kevin Windham. Windham, Lusk, and Greg Rand. Rand. Yeah. And then Greg Rand. Rand. And, and then Lusk. Yeah. Lusk. And, uh, and who's the other guy on the other uh, couldn't figure out who it was, if it was Rick Sennett or. No, no, I know his name. I can't think of it up the top of my head. But yeah. your left there kicked my butt, Windham and, and Greg Rand. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, I mean, th that's a great thing in our sport. You know, we, we've so grown up with so much family, so many yeah. so many these kids and these guys, and they grow up and they turn into adults and champions. And and I was just talking to Wardy. You know, I mean, yeah. this is the greatest sport ever that you, you meet your heroes. And nine times out of ten, your heroes, they turn out to be the greatest people you've ever thought, you know. Yeah. War, RJ's coming this weekend. I can't wait to see him. Man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what's been so awesome, you know, with this show. I've been able to stand next to Jimmy Hawley, Rick Johnson, Jeff Ward was just here, Chuck Sun. But then, you know, you know, now you're here. And we're, we're, what, we're, what the cognizant there is we're here. We're at the Supercrosses, and it doesn't go away. The enthusiasm and the passion that we all have on a daily basis. I mean, I, I sit home on a Saturday night, and, that, and that's my key live tv i cannot wait I, I tweet i get all excited i tweet with dave bowman man this <laughs> this is we've reached the pinnacle and i and i'm so excited to just be a part of it and be and just be a fan 
You know, uh, something else you were a very big part of after your Supercross career was Arena Cross, man. And you had a very successful venture there. Mr. Dash for Cash, you were the fastest man on the planet for three laps. Tell us how much fun you had racing that series. You know, I was uh, obviously blessed. You know, I mean, uh, you know, I, I got to like almost 30, and I, I didn't know what I was going to do. So Arena Cross came up. Uh, I, I almost won, I almost did it one year in 96, and Dave Castillo called me and goes, hey, we're going to do the Great Western Bank Boys. Right. And that was obviously a, a, a huge moment <laughs> for all of us, and, and it capitalized a lot of fans. And then the next year, we did a ring cross. And my biggest fault ever is I called Budman, hey, we should race a ring cross. Bad idea. Bad <laughs> idea, man. The guy goes on and win five championships, you know what I mean? Uh, but it, it, it's such a – I went the, the other weekend. It was in my town, my hometown in Des Moines, Iowa, and, or uh, in Council Bluffs, Iowa. And it was such a cool moment because they sold out, man. And I've never had, yeah. I've never had a race in, in my hometown. So to see them enjoy it, yeah. sell it out, capitalize on it, it was phenomenal. I mean, Bobby Canary, yeah. uh, all those guys, man, uh, Gavin Faith. It was a great night. They, they did a great job, and, uh, and I'm very, I'm very proud to be a part of that, as you yeah. as are. Andy. Well, it was, yeah, we were a part of it together, you know, and. I knocked you down a couple times, and I was afraid about you coming back in the pits, but, uh, you know. It was furious. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, Mike, uh, it goes back to my kid. I mean, yeah. you know, Mike, Gary, the entire family, they, they created the series. Phillips stepped in, took it over. They've done a great job. This whole chase for Arena Cross and Ricky right. Carmichael, I think it's a great job. It, it, it gives the kids a moment to kind of just be a part of it, you know, yeah. the attention, the, the combativeness, the aggressiveness, and they come here. So right. I, I think it's a, great, it's, it's a great direction. They're doing a good job. Yeah, are you, are you, look at that old photo there. Oh, boy. Styling. <laughs> look at that mullet. I'm growing it back yeah. right now, honestly. So. What was her name? Um, <laughs> uh, we're friends on Facebook. That was John Amar's <laughs> girlfriend at the time, I remember. <laughs> it really was? Yeah. Yeah. That's it, awesome. It's a picture that never goes away. Yeah. Yeah. Well, but that's a part of the same thing. You know, I mean, it's just cool to be a part. Social media is such a fun fun thing, you know, to capitalize and follow it. Old pictures come up, you know. So I enjoy it, yeah. I, I like to have that fun moment to, uh, hey, we're old school, you know. Yeah, old school, you know, telling stories. You lived with Jeff Emig for a long time, and that was back in your guys' good years. Tell us a story from that. You know, uh, you know, you know, you're from, <laughs> you're from the Midwest, yeah. and Jeff and I grew up together, and we still laugh about it. My dad and his dad would literally carve a first turn path. You know, they would they would scoop, you know, clean the gate out, and we would race three classes a weekend: 105, modified, and stock. Yeah, and we would usually end up three for three, but someone always got two wins overall <laughs> over the other one and whoever got those two wins the other guy oh don't want to go home with dad that day tough so him and i were were such competitors you know our competitors uh mm -hmm. i didn't like him he didn't like me and then we became friends and i have so much respect for him what he accomplished that night here in st louis yeah sure. he broke mcgrath smoke broke mcgrath streak and it's funny when he won that night, I was getting laughed. So if you can see him winning, I'm popping over the finish line job the exact time time. But he's done so much. And, uh, you know, just he's one of my best friends. And I have utmost respect for him. And now he's doing TV. You know, sometimes a little bit, I like busting his balls a little bit. <laughs> but uh, he does a good job. And, and to, to have the Midwest flavor that he has, like, yeah. you know, yeah. it's, it's good time for sure. Well, let's get up here to present day. And you're having some auctions and stuff. Tell us about Riley and, you know, and. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, the other day we, I, I, I auctioned up a couple of helmets. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm a divorced parent. <laughs> Divorce yeah. always yeah. is crazy. But I, I have a, he's got a great mom, yeah. Michelle, and he had diabetes. So we just found out this last month. And, uh, you know, the Obama uh, care doesn't always take care of sometimes. So I yeah. auctioned off some helmets. Uh, Mike Mason, another guy, pitched in. They, yeah. uh, they bought the helmets. And uh, it, it just helped kind of get him over the hump, yeah. take care of some expenses and stuff. You yeah. know, I mean, I, I, I would never ask for a handout. But... If I can give something back, like an old old school helmet, sure. you know, it's fun. So this I have some old friends that kind of kicked in, and uh, I'm a proud dad. You know you know what, Andy? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Same man. here. It's you know, a, it was that helmet in particular. That was your arena cross helmet. And I saw the picture of it. Yeah, I've seen the back of that thing uh, and the side of it quite a few times. Yeah, that was times. my first <laughs> lid, man. And, uh, you know, they, they – uh, a helmet – is everything yeah and like you, oh you, yeah you've been i mean i don't know how many you have jim you got to buy yeah. you have to have 30 but my, so my, mine are sold the in, inside is as crumbled away over the years. i'm sure some dust that, <laughs> it's funny i was looking the other day all my helmets have broken visors <laughs> so if the nba if the nfl guys think they have head injuries head right, right, right. Right. i might have a well, moment Danny, we got a question, question here for you you know what do you think about chad reed in the second half of this season you know i'm a huge fan of chad you know um He's old. Yeah. <laughs> I'm old. 
Um, but he's done so much with the team. His new rider, Josh Grant. I love Josh a lot. Um, I don't know what Chad has. I think he has a lot to offer. I hate the fact the black flag really bothered me, and I did I I, I busted yeah. John Gallagher's yeah. nuts a yeah. little bit because he came he came from Marine Cross. Right. He, but uh, I mean, nothing respect for Chad. I, right. I think he can win in any moment. Um, yeah. So if he if he if he w- would show up and win tonight, none of us would be surprised. Right. And right. But he could get tenth, and it we wouldn't, wouldn't be surprised, surprised either. Yeah. But he's I'm the s- only guy that can do that. I can't think of anybody else that could just yeah. get a top ten and then show up the next weekend and, and win, win the thing. Yeah. That's what, that's why I'm wearing a hat. That, you know, <laughs> I, I have nothing respect for him. I want to re- represent his sponsorship. You know, discount tires. Thank goodness to come into our sport, <laughs> man. You know what I'm saying? I don't get free tires. The other night, I think I was at the bar and I was wearing this hat. And I think they thought it worked there. <laughs> <laughs> they asked you. Hey, they're like, what, hey, what's, the best tire what's my, my pressure? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, man. I'm just wearing a hat. Boy, I tell you what, you know, it's just cool to be standing here with you. We have another question coming up here. We're going to work on that. But in the meantime, go ahead and tell the taxi cab story. It's okay, you know. <laughs> are, you, are you really are you sure yeah. this, Andy? Yeah, it's all right. So, was, uh, everybody's 19. Well, months. I've known Andy since he's a little kid. We're from the Midwest, you know, and we race arena cross. And arena cross, it got kind of control sometimes. <laughs> we did, sometimes we drank, we got time. <laughs> Big fun. Stuff got our hands. We're at, I think, Cincinnati Trade Show that yeah. time. And I think they were doing a show. Fro was there and stuff. So we jump in a cab. We're going, I don't know, we're going somewhere after, <laughs> after. And Andy decides to climb out the window and get on the roof. And I'm like, this is a, this is a terrible idea. <laughs> and, and Jim, I'm trying I, to impress you guys. Which is funny, Jimmy, because I know, Jimmy, you you have a, a big, strong history of madness. Yeah, no, I, yeah, I mean, I, I'm enjoying it. Uh, yeah, so Andy literally climbed out the passenger back window and climbed on the roof of the car. And I'm like, this is a bad idea. <laughs> Get back in the car, Andy. It's called teen wolfing. Yeah, it was, it was, man. I mean, and that's what we do. We have, yeah, we've we experienced. Had fun. I've always said, you know, I, I grew up with Mike Krajowski, Mike Larocco, and those are champions, amazing yeah. people. But I would never change what I've done because I swear to God I've had more fun than a thousand men. <laughs> you know, let's be honest. And yeah. you're a part of that. that was, There's your that uh, right next there, yeah. uh, question there for you from uh, DJ. Well, I would show you my tattoo. <laughs> it's on my leg. Pals. Me, Fro, and Bud. Well, you know, we were drunk one night, and I'm like, I need a tattoo. Yeah. So... Buddy Anthony lived in Moreno Valley. So we went to the tattoo parlor, and the guy's like, hey, I want a social distortion. It's my, one of my favorite punk rock bands. The guy's like, I got it in my back window, man. We'll trace it and put it on your leg. <laughs> <laughs> but Fro, uh, Fro has lived to ride, ride to live. Budman has a big old uh, tattoo on his sleeve, on his arm, and it just says pals. It's, it's, That's awesome. It's our three. It's our family. It's, it's cool that you guys are still family and still friends and stuff. And hey, man, we got to wrap this up. We got to get going. But Denny, hey. thank you for coming hey, on, thanks man. Thanks for having me. Pals always, man. You know Good that, to see man. You, uh, you know, I love Supercross. I'm a big fan, a huge fan. I mean, just uh, like t- us, we enjoy doing the show. We're just fans. I'm a dork. <laughs> I literally sit at home. I tweet. I, well, I'm so excited to, to the fact that it's live. You, you at home are so blessed to see what we're doing on a daily basis. Not what I'm doing, what they're doing on a daily yeah. basis. The fact you guys are here, Felt's crushing it. Thank you so much for having me be a part of it. Cool, man. All Thanks right. so much. And we're back on action here on the track. Looks like 250C qualifying number two. Yeah, I was, and, I was uh, checking out. Uh, the, Vicky the Golden's Vicky out Golden there. Yeah, out she's there. cracked off she's, a 57 too. Yeah, so she may. That might. Uh, we'll have to check and see if she can get into the 40 fastest and possibly. We've been saying it each and every weekend, maybe make history here in St. Louis, uh, becoming the first woman to uh, qualify for a night program. Pretty close, pretty close. we got a little bit of time left here. You know, let's see if she can get a heater in right here at the very end. We're trying to find her on the track. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, she That's, might have had a problem. Yeah, we don't see done, her on the yeah. track. She must have went back. and uh, So that'll do it, a 57-2 for Vicky. And 57-2. That's, I don't know. We'll have to get our producer, Stretch Kessler, to kind of check and see if that 52 point, uh, or 57.2 gets her in after that A practice. Man, it was fun having Denny and, and those guests on there right now. It's just, it's still surreal, you know, standing next to Jeff Ward and Chuck Sun and those guys. And it, it just, you know, it makes me such a huge fan of what we're doing and, and a huge fan of Supercross. You know, it's, it's cool. We're all here, you know, Jim. That's that's the point I was trying to make, you know. So well, there's Vicky right there, yeah. She's having Talking a little bit of mechanic. trouble with her bike all day. So not sure what that was, but 
Well, she looked a lot more comfortable uh, that last time out there. And, uh, you know, that's the thing about it. You know, when these guys are out there riding and they feel a little hiccup or a bog or something, right. I mean, you know, they're out there and she's talking about, uh, you know, probably what happened out there. And But hopefully that might, might do it for her. We'll have to see. We'll wish her the best of luck. And, folks, keep your questions coming in. Uh, uh, hashtag AskRDL, hashtag Supercross Live, hashtag Race Day Live. How funny would it be if the uh, cab driver uh, back in the day <laughs> is listening to Race Day Live and he says, I oh, remember man. that knucklehead on the top of my cab. I know. it was That was just, uh, hey, he, when you're around guys like that, you know, alpha male style, you got to try to impress those guys. But uh, <laughs> they were my heroes, Budman and, and Fro and, and Denny. You know, those guys were the coolest guys ever. Stay with us, folks. we got the A and B qualifiers coming up next. Who's going to have the top gate pick? We're going to find that out. Got a word from our sponsors. Please stay tuned. Hey, race fans, if you're looking for a bike you can win on right out of the crate, then check out the Yamaha YZ450F and National MX Champion YZ250F at Yamaha Motorsports, Motorsports.com today. And DC Shoes is proud to be the official sp footwear sponsor of AMA Supercross. Defy convention with DC Shoes. Hey, right. Jim, we're back here inside the Edward Jones Dome. Got uh, looks like 250B qualifier number two coming up here. Yeah, these boys are going to get after it and uh, see if uh, what they can do the final time out here at the uh, at the track here in St. Louis. Unfortunately, the, the, the fastest guy in the first qualifying was Preston Mole, and I believe he got a ride off of the track in the Asterix Medical Unit. So we'll hope he's okay. And maybe we'll, when they get going here, we'll hopefully he's back out there. But the goalie brothers, I can see that blue helmet. They're out there. Hometown race for those guys. I'd almost bet that Preston Mole's going to be out there. He's a pretty tough kid. I don't know. You're speaking of tough kids. Uh, one of the goalie brothers took a slam over here at the end of the rhythm section, and I, wow, you know, I'm glad he got up. It was just, uh, it was a big shot. But he, you know, like you said, these guys are tough gladiators. Yeah, I'm not sure that was uh, the uh, gully brother that runs that 385, and I'm not sure if that was Aaron or is uh, Adam. It was Adam. Right. Aaron is 386, but right. it was. Well, here they're off. That's uh, looks like Dakota Alex up there, number 88 on the KTM. He was he was fast out there in the first qualifying section. He's actually a really, really talented rider. I like watching him. Yeah, James Coy over there at the uh, KTM uh, Orange Brigade, they call that, correct? That's it. Yeah, the over amateur there. program at KTM is the Orange Brigade. Whoops, you know, continue to get broken down. Looks like they're getting flatter, but they're still, you know, they're rough, they're inconsistent. Yeah, I think those changes that the Feld track crew did, I, I think it improved it a lot for these uh, guys. You're seeing a lot of guys in that timing section uh, doing it a little bit more easier. They're able to uh, feel a little bit more comfortable, you know, as before, as, oh, am I going to make this? Now they're doing it relatively easy. This section here, Jim, they go, yeah, double and then triple out. You know, that's, that's the fastest line. It's tough. They're, that guy just did it. Ooh. And 355 here. That is Jeremy Taylor. Jeremy Taylor coming to us from Ohio. All the way from Ohio, so not too far away. Kind of a closer race for Mr. Taylor here. Yeah, he's, uh, but you're seeing the man up top there. We'll see when he comes around. Taylor on a Husqvarna. I see Preston Mole out there, number, uh, well, we'll see if he comes around, but I see his name up there. Levi Kilbarger, he's out there, number 83. And there's the times of 52-6 now for Dakota Alex, Levi Kilbarger that we talked yeah. about in that second there with Taylor. And I'm waiting to see if they click down. Oh, Press the ball keeps going down and down, so I'm not sure if he's out there. And number 813 there. Yeah, it's Aaron Lampy. Lampy out of New York on his YZ250F there. I'll tell you what, Jim, it sure was cool having Chuck Sun on here. I uh, I had never met Chuck and listening to him talk, you know, wow, what what a what a yeah, great, great man. You had to go out there and rough him up. He told me you told us that you're a dirty rider. He's afraid you're going to take him out. 
Come on, Jim. He just said I was uh, an aggressive driver. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we can't use the word dirty. All right. <laughs> yeah. Now, Chuck's a great ambassador for the sport. I mean, he does a lot of uh, very cool things. things that helps out Alex Moros, uh, legends and heroes, and, and just goes over to Lomo and just really enjoys still riding a motorcycle. And there's Dakota Alex. Goalie brothers, but uh, Dakota there, you know, it's, he's, he's shown a lot of promise, shown a lot of speed. You know, 52-4 is pretty good. Let's see how he does in the rhythm here. See if he gets the triple in the middle. He does, goes for it, sends it. Looking good out there. Got the orange and blue gear going on. Yeah, no, he's he's flowing out there. Definitely, anytime you can get out there and put in a good lap, you you know, trying different things. There's that inside, There's the inside right? Of that. Uh, you know, it's pretty cool that you know that I think they've done a good job. The belt track crew and uh, the designers of this course. That, that's one of the first times that I've seen a split lane where the racers come up here and talk to us on Race Day Live and say, "Hey, you know what? We don't know which one's going to be faster. We're using both of them, but as the track breaks down." You know, later on in the main events, we're going to see things go one way or the other. Yeah, and then, then they try to, you know, make it as fair as possible for those guys. Here comes Dakota around to complete another lap. And Ryan Zimmer jumps up to the top. So with There's about five my boy, minutes, though. Yeah. Preston Moles. Preston Moles back out there on the attack. Second quickest. Let's go through our top five. It's Ryan Zimmer, Preston Mole, Dakota Alex, followed by Carno, and uh, I think that's Aaron Goley, number 386. I told you, Preston Mole's a tough kid. He says he's going to get that bike in the main event uh, this weekend. And there he was uh, up and over the uh, triple jump right in front of the podium there. But here, take a look at this split lane. This right. is what we talked about. There's an inside and outside. You're seeing the guys go to the outside right now. The majority going to the uh, outside. We'll see if someone tucks into that inside there. I'm not sure uh, who's going to do it, but that's telling me that a lot of guys kind of prefer in that outside, outside. lane. It's just a natural. For now. For now. Yeah, it's Until just a natural. It the, yeah. uh, you know, it's just a natural way. You're flowing out of that corner. Yeah. You don't want to chop it off and go to that inside. That's a natural flow around that corner. But with that being said, there's a guy going to the inside right now. You know, you're getting more traffic through there, so it's going to get more running. So you're going to have to start going to that inside. So a few guys are going to have to start trying that inside. There's another rider. Can't see his number on a Kawasaki there. Just kind of rolling one. We'll have to watch the A guys and see what they do. Tomac says maybe he might be going out into that inside also. Yeah, you know, I, I think it's, you know, take your hat off to the field track crew for trying new things. You know, we've been racing Supercross. This is the 600 and what, fourth Supercross in history. And I like seeing new stuff on the track, you know, changing things up and creating better racing for the fans and, and making it interesting for the racers. I like seeing it. Yeah, and the other thing too, it's interesting when we had Andrew Short on the show today, that he had talked about, hey, I kind of like the Joker lane. He was kind of implementing, he'd like to see maybe some of those changes, you know, in the uh, Supercross uh, championship fight. You never know as we're watching Preston Ball now. Back, he's back up, man. Yeah, he was, he literally rode off the track in the Asterix medical mule the last time he was out, but set down a 51-3, so good for him. Yeah, those are pretty good times. And like we talked about with uh, Vicky Golden, a 57 Point two. So we'll see what happens if that'll, you know, get her in there. I'm seeing a couple guys, you know, 106s, 107s, 113s. Well, but yeah. those guys always wait till the last minute to, to lay down a lap time. And you talk about the minutes, they get about three minutes left here in this final beat practice here in St. Louis. It's going to be close, Jim. Just looking at there's 20 guys in this practice. And the 20 fastest guy in this practice had a 57.8. And Vicky had a 57.2. So, you know, she was ninth quickest, I believe, in her division in 250C. So doing a little bit of simple math there puts us pretty close. We're going to stay on top of it, try to, you know, get some information and figure out if she's in. You know, of course, history will be made if she's in. But again, you know, she's come close. And it'll be an interesting, very cool part of our night show tonight on Fox Sports 1 if she does make it in. Yeah, something interesting is you see Preston Bowl up at the top with that 51-3, you know. You remember when the Wonder Warthog program was around with yeah. Steve Bauer helping the guys yeah. out? 
You know, he's a, a, a Valley Victorian in high school, Preston Ball. This kid's an intelligent guy out there. Not only an intelligent racer, but it, he's a calculated guy like we thought. Well, we might not see him out, or we saw him on the Asterix Mobile Medical Unit yeah. get carved off. But I said he's a tough kid. He he's says back. he's gonna. He says he's gonna make the main event tonight. We really hope he does. With about two minutes to go here in 250B qualifying number two, Preston Mole, Ryan Zimmer, Dakota Alex, Levi Kilbarger is fourth, Carnow's fifth, followed by Aaron Goley, and Stewart, Perron, Dylan Slusser, and Grundle lining out the top ten. About a minute and a half to go here. Yeah, Still to come are the A qualifying groups, which is going to be exciting to see who's going to get the first gate picks. And now you're seeing some of those guys with their best lap times. Dropping Everybody, times, yeah. they're dropping them. That was their last, but I'm going to check again. Vicky Golden, 57. Two. Two. So there's a couple of guys out there at the uh, 20th there, uh, 57 eight. Right. But then you got that 55 nine. So there's only one guy. Uh, it's going to be tough. Tough, tough, for sure. It's interesting, you know, one of the Gully brothers up in seventh, the other one down in 15th, and I'm not so sure the guy in 15th is not the guy that we saw crash, and uh, we talked about it earlier with uh, the Gully brothers. And once again, I want to thank everybody for tuning in. I want to thank all of our international guests. Uh, go ahead and keep sending us pictures. Use the hashtags, Race Day Live, Ask RD. Ask RDL. Send us some photos. Yeah, we talked about it with the Gully Brothers. Seventh right now, 386. That is going to be Aaron Gully and Adam, 385. He's sitting in that 15th. And Adam's the one that had that real hard get off in that first uh, free practice. There's Carno there. Taylor. No, might have stalled it. I was kind of looking to see where. Uh, We'll have to watch the next practice. Uh, Taylor Potter from Australia. We got a chance to talk He'll to his girlfriend, yeah. Alex. Yeah, we did. Uh, she was his mechanic <laughs> last year, but she just came over. She unfortunately has a job in Australia. She's a good looking mechanic. She's only, uh, yeah, the, one of the best ones out yeah. there. Uh, she, she was only able to come over for a couple events, but nice to see her again. It's good to be Taylor Potter. Hopefully he has a good night tonight. Uh, that's going to do it here for this uh, B practice with Preston Mole and Zimmer, one, two, and Dakota Alex in that third. That's going to do it. 250 B qualifying number two is has come to fruition. It is over. Preston Mole is the Heat at a 51 flat, followed by Ryan Zimmer, Dakota Alex, Stewart, and Kilbarger. That's your top five. Going to be good to see which one of those guys get into the main event. It's going to be some good battling going on in that 125 last chance qualifier, Jim. There always is every week. Yeah, and you, we always talk about it. You're getting a chance to look at the times right there. We pressed them all up top of that uh, 51.0. That, that, that's that's a great time. And, uh, you know, what he's been through, the, we, we saw it happen in that uh, first time practice there. I'd, I'd love to see number 78, uh, you know, graduate. Yeah graduate into that main event. How do you like that? I like that. I like that. Valley Victoria. There are not too many of those in the sport <laughs> here. Supercross. And folks, quick word from our sponsors. Amsoil is the official oil of Loretta Lynn's Amsoil Arena Cross and Monster Energy Supercross. It's not only the official oil, Amsoil products have been tested in the most extreme conditions at the track and on the trail to ensure they are formulated for superior dirt bike performance. Get out front performance, get Amsoil. Coming up, the big guys. I'm excited. I think we're going to have a special guest for you guys. You know, if we if we haven't had enough awesome guests today, this guy is uh, another, you know, the guy I grew up with racing. And I'm going to wait and, and be, you know, let the surprise happen here. But okay. uh, it's going to be fun to have him come do the picks with us and help us announce these uh, A-class qualifiers coming up. Perfect. Yeah. He's from Louisiana. Can we tease him? Yeah. Let's tease him. <laughs> Number 511 as an amateur. <laughs> I barely recognize him, though, because the Grizzly Adams beard isn't on there anymore. Yeah, what's up with that? We'll have to ask him about that. We'll ask, uh, have to ask him about the uh, Arena Cross series, too. Yeah, absolutely. He was down there last weekend. But uh, welcome to the show here. Folks, have another, uh, another question here. Where can you get one of these mugs that we're drinking? Well, that's a great question. Actually, at the uh, Supercross 
merchandise trailer. Come yeah. to the races, go down the merchandise trailer. Yeah, you, I, I see a lot of people uh, walking around. You get a snow cone, you, you get a mug, it's pretty cool. Absolutely, yeah. That's been a favorite of mine since round one. I like it. I mean, they, they got a connecting rod and a piston there. You got the <laughs> tires, you know, you got some Dunlop tires there. It's a cool thing. Definitely a cool thing. You know, you think we take these home each and every weekend, but it stays with the crew. They wash it, though. I hope so. Yeah, yeah. John, Dan, uh, DJ, DJ, just make yeah. sure they're washing our cups. Uh, John's shaking his head. No, he's not washing <laughs> our cups. Who knows what they do. But, uh, no, man, I hope you guys have enjoyed the show today. Had a little bit of trouble at the beginning, but uh, hopefully we've picked the slack back up. Now we've got the 250A group qualifying number two, ready to hit onto the track. Marvin Muskin, he was uh, a second faster than everybody last time out. But yep. our man James Dakotas that was up here with us has been riding greats all day. It's going to be cool to see if he can, you know, stay up there in the top five. And it's a good gate pick, yeah. Up second, uh, Bogle with the man who runs out of two, and then uh, Jeremy Martin with a 49.7. So unlike we've seen in the 450 class, a little bit of a spread here in these top three. Absolutely. Uh, the goggles are going on. The kickstarters are going down. We're going to be back to action here in qualifying. You know, we talked about it earlier in the show. You know, Honda's domination here. They, they've uh, they've won uh, six in a row from 08 to 13. Now I'm going to name off the guys. Trey Kennard. I'm sorry. Trey Kennard in 08. Blake Wharton at 10, 11, and 12 when he dominated here. Yeah. Won it in 13. And, uh, you know, the last time Yamaha's won a 250 class here, was 2002, and that was Chad Reed. And I'm 13 gonna, years ago. Yeah, and I'm going to go out on a little bit of limb. The last time a Suzuki won here, and they've, Yamaha and Suzuki have only had three wins here in St. Louis. We should do a tribute. But, yeah. yeah, 2013. 2003. Let, let, or 2003. Let's do a tribute. Yeah. Let's see, you know, with the hashtag right. RDL. I want to know who Suzuki's last win here in three. I want to know the rider that did it in the... And they're There's underway. Jimmy. There's, yeah, the Ripper out front. I think we got him fired up. <laughs> He's got a good program going. He's riding good, riding hard. He's got Gary Bailey in his corner. I like the guy. Jeremy Martin there, right. number six. <laughs> you know, you got to remember this guy won, you know, round two in Atlanta. Yeah, he, he, he needs to win here because, like you talked about, it's been 13 years since we've seen a Yamaha win here in St. <laughs> Louis, and this is the guy that can do it. A lot of speed. A lot of speed. You wow. Know, another couple months when we go outdoors, he's going to be really fast. But uh, here in Supercross, you know, it's he just hasn't found that consistent flow. Notice, he, it was a little bit upset there. He went to reach off he, for a tear-off, and he Jeremy missed it. He got it. He's a panic grab there. When he pulls the tear-offs, I mean, he yanks it. Well, let's take a lap with him here. We're seeing him in that uh, section here. He's coming into uh, the right-hander before you go up and over the uh, – Big triple there. You're going to round that right hand right into the set of whoops there as we watch Jeremy Martin. So no, he's on a heater right now. Yeah. You got that big hander. Carry that speed around. Go to that outside lane. Double. Triple. Seed hop that triple there. The double into that right hander. I'm going to venture to guess he's going to be at the top of the board here for there sure. Here he comes up and over the Monster Energy finish sign. And there it is. Let's see Jimmy Dakotas with a 49.7. No. Wow. So, so another one now. AJ Catanzaro there, the cat, getting into the main events, but a lot of speed. He's a guy that can. You see how hard it is on those step off and uh, step on, step off, that front end lofting high. I'll tell you what, man, look at her boy, Dakota. Looks smooth, just killed the whoops. Wow, did you see Marvin Muskin stand up around that corner? Never even took his feet off the pegs. Unbelievable talent that guy has. Well, right now it's Dakota Smart, Savachi, Oldenburg. Oldenburg, Owen. And R.J. Hamsire, Bogle, Peters, Starling, Cat and Zero, that's your top ten. There uh -oh. goes Marvin Muskin up to the, with the 48-1 now. Jim, we got an answer to our trivia question already. And look well, right there. This gives some credit to Corey Rankin. How about that? Nice, Corey. Way to go. Brandon Jessamine, the last time Suzuki won here in uh, 2003 as we got a bunch of yellow flags out on the track. We got the white flag with the red crosses down there. Yeah, we got somebody down at the end of the split rhythm lane, Jim, but it looks like they're picking the bike up, trying to get a number on it. It's clear across the stadium from here. Our, it's, as you come out of that split lane and before you make that right hander, I'm not sure uh, what happened, but that's where he went down after the split lane. Just before you head into that uh, 
you can see the rider, he's back up. Got a little bit of a limp. Turn number six, just back before up. that turn yeah. number six. Oh, Colt Nichols, bummer. Yeah, he's been on a good streak lately. Hopefully he's gonna be okay. You had a chance on the track walk I to did. an interview with him. I did, I caught up good with him. He's uh, working hard there with Guy Cooper and, and, and Marshall Plum. And they're really close, you know? They're, they're trying to get the bike a little better. There he goes. Oh, uh, he's getting back on yeah. it. He'll be okay. Get that visor pointed back down there, buddy. Got a little bit of bent subframe action going on. There's Marvin. Let's watch this guy go to work here. Well, he's already going to work with that 481. <laughs> That, uh, that's faster than uh, that 48.3 that he laid down in that first time practice. There's our Jimmy Dakotas, our guest still, today. Yeah, still in the top five you're here qualifying, so good for him. Once again, top five, Marvin Muskin, Joey Savacci, Justin Bogle, Jamie Martin, and James Dakotas. There's Bogle. Bogle got him last weekend, man. Got the whole shot. And, uh, you know, Muskin didn't get a very good start. But as good as Bogle was riding, I don't know. You know, Bogle, Bogle was going to win last week, and it just seemed like that was the way it was going to be, and he made it happen. Yes, he did. Sabachi's been riding really hard, you know, too. So that's what Mitch looks for. He looks at lap times. I mean, he, you know, yeah. you talked about Jimmy Dakotas. He said, yeah, Mitch. You know, he, yeah. he'd like to ride for Mitch, but you know, you got to you got to put in some lap times, and you know, lap time you really don't have to be. Of course, your motorcycle's got to be set up, but you really don't have to be in that good of shape, you know, to go down and lay uh, one lap down fast. Right. I mean, you got to be in, in good shape, but not great shape. Great shape, you got to be to win 15 laps at main event. Yeah, you got to be in really good shape. And there's Gannon Audet again with the uh, Heroes and Legends, who's going to be honoring uh, Jeff Hero, uh, Jeff Emig, not Jeff Hero. He's my hero, but Jeff yeah. Emig tonight, you know. And what a stadium this is for Jeff, winning that Supercross in 1996, the first of his career. I say the first of his career, but actually in 95, he won Vegas when the lights went out. But, you know, there was some controversy there. But the first, in my opinion, the first Supercross Jeff won was here in, in St. Louis. And with about under five minutes to go, Marvin Muskin, Jeremy Martin. Martin's moved up into second. Marvin Muskin with a 48-1, Martin with a 48-3. So really close right there, just two tenths. Wow. And then two tenths behind him is Savachi. One tenth behind him is Justin Bogle. And then they got about a second on Dakota. So. Well, we just have under under four minutes to go, 355. Now there's still a lot of time to yeah. kind of find some uh, different lines out there. But maybe Jeremy Martin's going to break that 13-year uh, uh, Yamaha drought. Drought. Yamaha. Right. And speaking of Yamaha, motocross fans, if you're looking for class-leading 450 power and with 250-style handling, then check out the incredibly quick and nimble Yamaha YZ450F at YamahaMotorsports.com or your local Yamaha dealer. Jeremy wow. looks good, man. Jeremy's yeah. he's charging out there. This he's is on another heater right now, yeah. Let's see if that can uh, drop it down. A little bit of a, you know, not, not as good of a corner, but again, let's see how this works out. That's the other side of that. Oh, oh it doesn't work out, but he saved it. <laughs> That's not good. That's gonna definitely gonna uh, put that lap time down. But yeah. oh, he's pissed see, too. You yeah. see that tear off come on? He's gonna come right into the mechanics area. I'm not sure that the mechanic might not have told him, "Hey, try the other lane. You gotta try the other lane." He's still got time. He's still got time. He's talking to his mechanic. Come on. You know, Jim. But I think what they're doing there is they're break. They break this track down into segments, and he's probably telling him right there, you're know, right behind him in that corner before the whoops. That segment you know, whatever it is, that's segment three on our list, but he's probably saying right there, that's where the number 25 is faster. You need two tenths right there, you're getting beat. And then they have team, you know, their teams are watching this up in the press box and on their video and they're using their headsets to communicate that down to them. Well, yeah, but there's there's one other thing that I gotta tell you about that we didn't see on the screen, a 47-3, so you're gonna, oh. find, you're gonna find some more time. Marvin Muskin just Jeez. set a 47-3. <laughs> It's a second, almost a full second over Bogle, who now sits in that uh, second spot with a 48-2, and then uh, Jeremy Martin also with a 48-2, but Bogle had a 48-2-6-6. Martin had a 48-2-9-3, but uh, Marvin, Marvin Bruce just, just crushed everybody's just, hopes and dreams. <laughs> well, and not only that, wow. he, he, uh, he, he crushed uh, Eli Tomac's fast time. Yeah. Eli Tomac had a 47-8, so a 48, uh, 47 Three for uh, Marvin Muskin. 
good sideways force, Marvin. There you go. Unbelievable. Silky smooth, you know, the, the, the more technical and rutted and nasty the track gets, it just seems like the more he stands out. Well, he's, he's got a 13-point lead. I'm sure he's upset not winning last week and losing yeah. that three-point support. He wants to get it back and have a 16-point lead or even greater, you know, with one round to go uh, when we get to East Rutherford, New Jersey in the latter half of April. It's time to shut up or put up. You know, we got one round before their break. They go on, this series goes on Easter break next weekend and then the 250 West joins back up in Houston for two rounds. Houston and then followed by Santa Clara. Billy Schlag. Oh, Billy Schlag. I remember Billy Schlag. Yep, me too. That's cool. Oh, no, oh. RJ. RJ Hampshire down. Got about 50 seconds to go, the red flag. RJ Hampshire down in that section after the uh, start after the first turn before you actually get into that first turn there. The red flag's out. Yeah, I think so that'll, yeah. Well, they got 50 seconds. That'll so probably, probably be the end of that practice. But, uh, man, I hate seeing that because he's on such a good roll. You know, RJ is. Yeah, another rookie is uh, you see the Asterix Mobile Medical people down there. And you, you talk about the uh, the rookie there with RJ Ham. Sorry, I know last weekend he had that problem with Davalos, finished up 11th. Right. But if you look at it, you know, he was sitting fifth in the points. And, uh, you know, he, he had uh, some pretty good rides. You know, he had a Daytona. Yeah. No, he's got the speed and he's been building. So to see him take a, a crash like that right now is it's just a bummer. So we're going to hope he's going to be okay. Once again, we want to remind you guys, have another guest coming up. Got a good special surprise. He's a fan favorite. He was here helping out with uh, Chris, Chris Blankenship's uh, memorial fund here in St. Louis. And uh, they said that it was a good, you know, very, very good thing Great last turnout. night, Jim. Great turnout. Raised a bunch of money for his family. And uh, it's good. Well, so RJ, uh, RJ Hampshire is... Uh, well, that's a good sign. The Asterix Mobile Medical Unit have his uh, helmet off. They're talking to him and stuff, so that's a good sign. We're back here on track here in the Edward Jones Dome. Once again, coming up tonight on Fox Sports 1, we're going to see the big show. Round 13. It's already round 13 here in the 2015 Monster Energy AMA Supercross Champion, uh, FIM World Championship. Ryan Dungey's pulling away. You know, we got to make sure and see what he's going to do, if he's going to stay the course, or if Tomac's going to go on a winning streak and make this thing close down to the wire. Meanwhile, on 250 East, Justin Bogle won last weekend, and, you know, 13 points separating Marvin Muskin and Justin Bogle. Well, our uh, our special guest has arrived, and you know we're gonna we're not gonna keep the suspense going for too much longer here, but uh, we're gonna wait till we get you on camera so we can see that new freshly shaved uh, smile of you there. You know, I don't know the last time I saw you, you look kind of scary. There he is, ladies and gentlemen, Kevin Wyndham. Welcome to Race Day Live, brother. Great good to be here. Good yeah. to see you, Kevin. How I, you uh, been? I changed my look. I wake I wake <laughs> yeah. up on a random Thursday morning and decide it's time to go. And I, I had <laughs> the thing was I'd, strong. I had taken the no shave November a, a bit far, but yeah. uh, so I'm I'm back to. Uh, to baby face. Well, as baby as you can be at right. 37, right? <laughs> yeah, I hear you, man. You know, hey, Kevin, tell us about the, the, you know, the function you guys had last night for Chris Blankenship. I heard you guys had a huge turnout and raised a bunch of money and stuff. And, and how did yeah, it go? Yeah, of course we did. And uh, it was held at the Moto Museum here in, in St. Louis. And, uh, yeah, it was a fantastic time just to honor Chris and, and to spend time with his family and raise money for for them. And, you know, as a lot of us know, when, when you lose someone like that, I mean, it's – the giving never is over, right? right. So uh, Chris was a really, really close friend to me, and, and uh, so it hit really close to home. And unfortunately, uh, glad to see uh, uh, Hampshire getting up now. You know, yeah. Anytime, anytime red flags come out or cross it. flags, and uh, looks like the Asterix medical team here did a fantastic job getting him up, and uh, glad to see him moving around. But So the thing last night went great. Good. Able to raise money. But it, it's never over for a family like that, you know. You know, that's the second swing you've taken at helping out the family and stuff. You had your party in the pasture this year, and it was huge. You had Craig Morgan, and it was awesome. Tell us a little bit more about how that was for you. Well, yeah, that was uh, a, a great time was had for sure. And, and to be able to have that much fun and then to raise money for, for the family was fantastic. We were able to uh, help uh, pay for uh, the Blankenship family's home, so give them a, sh a shelter as they uh, start this journey without their father and and uh, husband so uh, that was a lot of fun Craig was so instrumental in making that happen opened my track up we had a fantastic time yeah. and uh, 
good day of riding. Had some pros supported and, and riders from all over the uh, the country come out and ride with us. I yeah, saw some yeah. of those videos, old Brett Q on the whip, whip contest. Yeah. You with guys RG, were going at guys it. Were yeah, going Q was throwing it down for sure. So it was a lot of fun. You know, this has been a good dome for you. You know, you won here in what was it, Jim? Two thousand and well, well, the last time was, uh, for yeah, Honda, oh eight. Yeah, it was uh, fantastic here. I've had some success on uh, even the 125s and, uh, on the Yami days and, uh, you know, on through my career. So this uh, the dirt here is, is kind of uh, similar to what I would have at my house and something about a city. You know, I mean, obviously everyone knows these tracks change uh, year after year and, and venue after venue. But uh, something about either a city or, or building momentum when you come into a building that, that once you've won in, 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 a, in a place like this and you and you come back, it almost doesn't matter what the track's like, right? You, right. Just, you just carry yourself differently in that city. And you know, I think it was a combination of dirt and all those, uh, those things. But, yeah, a lot of success here. Well, and you talk about it, uh, 1996, uh, you were riding a two, oh, actually a 125, 125 two-stroke. Yeah. You won here when Emig won that night. And then you... You came back in 98, and you, you, you got a win here on a 252 stroke, and then you That's backed right. it up. It's a long time from 98 to 08 uh, there before you won a, again. Well, here. That, that's starting to make me feel bad a little bit, Jim, because, say, I, because on, I'm Take actually, on my man now, now I'm saying this has been a great home to me, but I went, on a, decade, I went on a decade stretch that's of no right, wins. Though. That's all right. Hey, I want to ask you, last weekend, you had a chance to do something that you haven't done. You were the Grand Marshal at the Amsoil Arena across cross. Yeah. in New Orleans, and you watched the start of the road. Uh, you know, the race to the championship, and you saw Chris Bloss come out, and he just dominated with both wins. Yeah, you know, and and I can tell you guys uh, by being on the floor with the riders and, and how many of those guys are, are in, in the arena cross from Supercross here. The, uh, you know, the, the list is so long of guys who have, have gone back to arena cross. And to see those guys know that where we're starting yeah. for this race to the championship that's going to end in Vegas, an amazing weekend of racing in Vegas as, you know, championships for both the Amsoil Arena Cross as well as Monster Energy Supercross. Those guys had some fire in them, and, and they're like, okay, it's time to get it on. And, and uh, you know, all do a clean slate. They've all earned their right to be in that championship chase. And now, okay, it's time to get it on. And, and it's, you know, we, we've seen, I remember when uh, Chad Reed fell in Detroit the year he and I were really battling for a championship. And when he hit the ground, I'm like, yeah, man, I got a shot. This is my time, you know. And, this yeah. is, and, and we came close that year, uh, missed by, I think, maybe five points or whatever. But the point of the matter is, is that, you know, it's a level playing field in the Arena Cross right. right now, and those guys are motivated to take, take that championship home. Well, it's something else you did. You, you, you took a hot lap out there. How was it riding in the well, Arena I, Cross? I, you haven't I, been I, riding in a while. I'm glad the arena was, was uh, smaller than what our footprint here is in Monster Energy Supercross because in 23 seconds I was a little winded and pumped. So <laughs> I, I made jokes all day. I was, I was, you know, I was decently fast. I think I was uh, four, qualified 14th, yeah. which is respectable for the amount of riding I've been doing. But... I would only qualify for the bracket racing, the one lap head to head, because anything more than <laughs> right. one lap, I could not do at this point. Well, and here's the thing about it. Everybody says, well, arena cross racing, it's small. It's how you don't have to train. I think you got to train as much because you're, there's a lot of bar banging going on. Your adrenaline gets up in those races. There, there is a uh, level of intensity there in the arena that you know, you're forced into by the tight environment. Uh, it, it is, it is, uh, you know, it's a, it's a mold of Supercross, but there's, it has its uh, differences, the way they ride it, the way they train for it, and, and the things that they have to watch out on, you know, as far as the 180 corners and in every spot. But, uh, you know, right now, this being here is uh, fantastic. These guys have really opened it up, and the speeds here are, are a lot greater than what we saw last weekend. You know, Kevin, you won that 125 uh, divisional championship and you went to the east west shootout and you and ricky carmichael went to town man you guys were slamming each other but you won that thing looking at uh marvin muskin and bogle and then looking at cooper webb out west who do you see as fastest right now well i you know i like the uh the way that uh, marvin is, is carrying himself he's he, he really looks the part of the vet he's uh, just what top of the board here by two tenths in this final uh, yeah. practice here uh so you know he, he has that championship mystique about him. Yeah. I, I like that. Uh, Bogle rode phenomenally well there. Uh, but, you know, until you get them together on that one race, which, you know, is only going to happen in Las Vegas here at, right. the, at the finale, that's that's the, that's the tough part about that race. You only have one time to prove you're the best, and if you don't get it done there, then, right. hey, it goes down the record book. Marvin's going to go down here and uh, – Talk to Ashley. We're going to see how uh, you know how he was liking the track. He's got uh, two tenths over Savachi, but uh, pretty surprising there from Savachi. He's, he's shown a lot of speed. You know, he's he's trying hard. You know, Mitch wants to get him a win. 
Yeah, he uh, def definitely Mitch wants every, <laughs> every win he can get, but here, here we go. Let's see yep. what he's got to say. Pro Circuit Kawasaki rider, the number 37, Joey Savachi. Joey laid down a super fast lap time in this uh, second round of qualifying. What did you put in your head to go out there and put this lap down? Oh, I just knew I needed to uh, minimize the mistakes. So, uh, tonight's going to be difficult. Track's uh, it's breaking down pretty good, and um, it's going to take a good start in 15 solid laps. How do you think you're going to have to adjust yourself out there on the track tonight? It seems like it's changing, and then there's that split lane. Do you see yourself having to take different lines out there? Oh, for sure, especially if you don't get the, the best of starts. you got to get around the guys in front of you as fast as you can. But, um, I mean, tonight's going to be all about patience. Uh, got to be calm and smooth and hit your marks. And the better you flow, the, the better you ride. So. And the better you look. I have to talk about this Thor gear right now. I know that they're doing big things in 2015. It, it just looks so comfortable. What is it about this gear? Oh, uh, no, the gear is good. Thor makes incredible gear. And uh, I mean, it pretty much speaks for itself. There's a lot of guys that wear it for a reason. So I uh, know uh, it's good. Thor gear, pro circuit, everyone. It's awesome. Anything you're going to work on your bike before we, the heat races when you come out here in heat race number one? No, leave it how it is. <laughs> he likes it here today in St. Louis. One more time for this Monster Energy Pro Circuit Kawasaki rider, Joey Savachi. He'll Joey. take the second. Another mouth guard you saw yeah. there, Andy, again. What do you think about, about that, Kevin? I couldn't imagine riding with one of those in my mouth. Have you ever done it? I, I couldn't either, but I think the research shows that uh, when you're taking that, those impacts, uh, it, it truly helps to have the mouth guard in. Okay. And, uh, well, I tell you what, he's in a good spot right now. For him to say, I, I know even being second fastest there in that session, to say, I'm not I'm not changing anything, that, that's pretty rare. I, I don't know if the fans truly know how much clicking goes on to these yeah. machines in between these time practices. So he's in a good spot right now knowing that, hey, I'm going back to the truck, I'm going to eat a nice dinner, and this, uh, this thing's ready to go. Here's a guy that uh, I, I think kind of took it after your shoes, you know, Eli Tomac, uh, you know, the Geico Honda team. Uh, you know, uh, hiring him on to ride a 450. We see that bike underneath the factory Honda uh, truck. He's getting a lot of support from uh, HRC there as we saw him uh, do that triple right there. But just been on fire lately wow. in the last couple races. I think he's not afraid to do his wheelie the whoops. Yeah, well, we all know what that looked like at Daytona. Oh. That was just uh, awesome. Yeah, beautiful finesse there through the whoop section. Did a little bit there. I, I, I don't know if uh, that was quite as... Uh, uh, pretty as the one he did at Daytona. It looked like he was kind of on a little, bit of a throttle ride. You know, those yeah. things have tremendous power there. But, yeah, you know, he's a fantastic rider, and, uh, you know, you kind of get the sense that uh, when he does start clicking them off, especially coming off the weekend there in Detroit, uh, what, what can he do here tonight when he, when he really gets in his groove? And is it like, you know, right. when I first came on, is it too little, too late? I mean, is, is there too much of a gap? Where Dungey's at, but you know, well, you start clicking points. off. Yeah. You start, you yeah. start, you start clicking off those uh, wins, wins and, and start putting the pressure. We'll, we'll see. But well, looking at him, looking at both of those guys on the track right now, there's Chad Reed, and then there's Eli, and Dungey's right there. So let's see how these shake up. Dungey was fast. Dungey's the fastest right now. I think it, when it updates, there we go. A 48.4, followed by Eli with a 48.6. Well, Cole Seeley now jumps up at the 48.6. What about Cole Seeley, man? He's putting. Doing some pride there for the 14, making it look good for you. Yeah, he uh, he is. He's, he's starting to come around and uh, had some tough rides earlier in the season, but somewhat seemed to have weathered the storm and, uh, and riding well now. So you know, I think he's on a good good note. And I tell you what, last night at the uh, talking about the the uh, fundraising we did last night, my son wanted to buy Cole Seely's plastic that he donated for the auction, and uh, you know he's waving his flag. He, he has no idea what the auction is. He and he wound up winning the, the graphics. Uh, but I told him, I said, look, I, I could have got you some 14s. Like, no, I want Cole Seeley's 14s. Really? So oh, already dang. my son, <laughs> is, is, has, has, he's oh, progressed right. with the sport to the new 14. You, you know, it's interesting. <laughs> uh, I think it was round uh, three. I did an interview with uh, Cole Seeley. I said, hey, look, I know you called Kevin Wyndham and you asked if he could run the number 14, but I'm sure he didn't say you go 14-14 to open up the season either. No, no, that wasn't uh, wasn't a request, and uh, it was a good conversation we had about the number. And uh, like I said, things are coming along for him now, and hopefully he can finish out the season strong. Well, I mean, how does that work? I mean, he just called you up and said, "Hey, Kevin, I, I, I get a chance to pick a number. Uh, you're a hero of mine. I'd love to have your number." I mean, wh how did well, that all well, come yeah, about? Well, yeah, a lot of fans asked that, and I think it was just Cole Seeley being a gentleman and asking me about it. Because I mean, look, I don't own the number. The AMA owns the number, and I, I haven't gathered enough points to make it rightfully mine anymore so uh you know cole was just being a gentleman about it and uh it was open for the taking i said hey man you like it you grab it and go with it yeah well that was nice to be called you beast and everything that's pretty cool absolutely and tomac jumps up to the top 47 9 about a half a second faster than dungy so wow he let tomac too to race man yeah but still not as fast as marvin muskin with a 47 3. 
Marvin's just been on fire. You know, like we were talking about, when it's ruddy and technical, Muskin's just more and more amazing. So, got a lot like you were, Kevin. When it was like this is really when you really stood out, when the track was tough. Correct. He, he has a, a very uh, smooth style, and it would be interesting to see uh, when, when these 450s get going uh, if, if there's some options. I know that Eli was talking about quad in this section he's at right now. That's what he was Going about. all the way over that, and, uh, you know, but that momentum might bring you to the out, outside where in this split lane that he's in currently, he might be on the outside. So right. there's, some, there's some things that these 450s are having to decide <laughs> on these rhythm sections where uh, I think we might see some pretty crazy stuff tonight and, and, and uh, potentially some quads. Yeah, yeah, it's it's that's crazy, you know, and probably no doubt why, you know, when you were at the end of your career, you're probably starting to think, you know, why am I jumping 130 feet in a rhythm section? <laughs> I, I was thinking more on, on those uh, th those Ooh. opening ceremony transitions. Yeah. There were some that were more than 130 feet. Big. <laughs> yeah, I put a lot of time and effort into figuring those things out, and I, believe it or not, I felt uh, felt comfortable doing them. I, looking back, I don't really know why I yeah. felt comfortable doing them, but... You know, being being in the grind like these guys do in this this changing environment, like this like the whoops, like you see Cole kind of dancing around. They're they're different every lap. A transfer was the same over and over and over again. And truly, that's one of the things about the the Monster Energy Supercross that's so technical for these guys is this this changing map, this this this, this changing environment that is yeah. always getting chewed up. These 450s are and you know, the Dunlop tires are just destroying this race surface, and uh, it's ever it's a living surface. So. And with a little under five minutes to go, it's still Eli Tomac, followed by Cole Seeley, Ryan Dungey, Weston Pike, Jason Anderson, Davey Millsaps, Chad Reed, Josh Grant, Andrew Short, and Brock Tickle rounding out your top ten. You know, we were looking at Tickle a little bit earlier, and I noted that uh, that one practice, he only went out there about five laps, and then he pulled it in. He must have had a, a mechanical or something. Dungey right back to the top. This is getting exciting right here. Going back and forth, a 47-8. So... I'm telling you, you know, Dungey, I don't think he's going to walk home in this championship. He wants to get another win down the stretch. What do you think, Kevin? Uh, that's just Dungey's uh, person. That's who yeah. he is. And, uh, yeah, he, he wants to win every every time. I think there's probably going to be some part of every race if he's not in the driver's seat where he says, you know what, I'm not losing a lot of points to this championship. So, you know, certainly not taking any risk. But, you know, when, when he lines up and it's an even playing you know, field, all these riders are behind the starting gate in, in a single file line. He doesn't go to that situation thinking, okay, I, 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 don't, yeah, I don't have to win tonight. You know? So um, winners are pretty much winners regardless of what the points read. Yeah. You know, another guy struggling, Andy, we talked about it earlier, Blake Baggin still down there in that Not having a good day. Yeah. Uh -uh. Not like uh, Blake Baggin. I know he had third year last year in the 250 class when he was here, well, so he he's used a, to the soil. He had a pretty big crash last weekend, and, uh, you know, maybe he's feeling the effects from that a little bit. Yeah, could be. This guy's feeling no effects from anything right now, other than uh, having the you know the greatest season of his career. <laughs> Which you know it's crazy. You know, 2010 in his rookie season, he wins a championship, and it's been you know now we're five years later, and he's in position to win this thing again. 47 is Baggett now for Dungeon. Now, you see the difference in that rhythm section. I don't know if the if the viewers picked up on it, but Baggett yielded over to the side with the kicker to get the, the hop off of there. And when we see Dungey, it was all about momentum. He didn't, he didn't have favor to, off, to the right yeah. side. He stayed on the left side, which is a more uh, you know, committed line straighter from point A to point B. And also the not the, the, the knuckle yeah. on that table doesn't slow you down as much. So you know, that's the things that they're racing for right now is just those little tenths of seconds. And you know, Baggett obviously not feeling it right now and, and taking that line, just those little subtle differences in rhythm lines. It, well, the other thing too with Baggett in a 50.6, I mean, he's got a lot of ground. A lot of those little there. knuckles to Yeah, there's a lot of <laughs> yeah. things out there that yeah. he's gonna have to do differently. Yeah, watch as he comes in this rhythm, maybe they'll, they'll show it again, see if he takes the same line. Big triple in the middle. Yeah, see, right yep. there, he hits that little Looking knuckle. That knuckle yeah. Yeah. Just doesn't seem like could be riding from an inch off to talk to him after right. the show go down there. Maybe the, he's feeling the effects uh, as we're watching Davey Millsaps here just kind of roll through this section. Couple top fives in a row for Davey. Seems like he's getting his speed back. You know? Talked to Mike Williamson earlier and he uh -oh. says, you know, tonight's going to be the night Davey's going to get on the podium. So we'll see as he comes in to talk to Mike Williamson yeah. right there. Got somebody down hard right there before the finish line. I think that's Weston Pike. He's back going, of course. 
now we're going to have to rebuild the finish line jump, man. Yeah, well, yeah when, when Weston goes down on a jump face, he moves the entire jump. It's like an earthquake. <laughs> Once again, Dungey, you know, looks solid. Getting along with the track really well here tonight. Well, and he dropped a little bit off, 47-4 uh, now. So he's just uh, one tick off of uh, that 47-3 that uh, Marvin Musk and his teammates. Just about a minute to go. It's it's going to be interesting to see if Tomac's going to try to fight him again to get that top, you know, get that number one gate pick for the heat race. I want to see these guys go at it again. You know, they went for about four laps last weekend, and Dungey was like, okay, you're a little better. But just judging by qualifying here, I think Dungey might have a tenth on, on, on Eli tonight. But, Bill uh, Sapp's rolling back out yeah. now. Let's try to find Eli and see if he's going to put another heater down for us. Here, he already, he's already, he's, already he's going. He's on one now, yeah. yeah. Kevin, you were good at that, putting the heater in on the last lap. Called the we, we a number that, of races. We play know? that board a lot. Uh, we as in they. I no longer play the board. <laughs> well, in Vegas when, you play the board. Yeah, when, you know, when, the gambling when, tables. Wow. <laughs> when you're out there, uh, that that, that uh, Monster Energy leaderboard we have out in the uh, middle of the uh, track, it weighs on these riders' minds more than you would think, considering they're not giving away anything for practice other yeah. than low gate position. Eli just jumped into the whoops about 10 deep on that lap. Carried the front end about halfway through it before he landed. So let's see how this lap turns out for him. How about Anderson? There he comes across. In second. And 47-6. Doesn't get it. That's Whoa. his fastest lap of the session, but Dungey's 47-4. You know, checker flags out. With uh, I don't see anybody else out there on a heater, so. Well, Anderson's feeling it, or actually Josh Grant. Only Grant whips it that hard on the triple. Wow, there it is right there, ladies and gentlemen. Your fastest qualifier, Ryan Dungeon with the 47-4. Let's go through the top 10. It was Dungey, Tomac, Anderson. Good job for the rookie there, followed by another rookie, Cole Seeley in fourth, Weston Pike fifth, Millsaps, Tickle, Reed, Short, and Grant. It's going to be a good race tonight, Kevin and Jim. I can't wait to see. Uh, looks like it's going to be the number five and the number three show. That needs to be a good night for Anderson because Jason Anderson, you know, after that opening round finishing up second, he struggled these last couple weekends. So yeah. good to see him up. I'm sure he's going to gain some confidence. Well, what are you doing right now, Jim? I'm just writing down the times. You're not you, writing down all the times. It looks like no, you're. No, just uh, the top three. But oh, you're, so you're starting your podium <laughs> no, picks already? No, not yet. Is, is not that yet, what you're not, doing? No, no, no. I'm just. I'm, I'm actually helping you, Kevin, because it's been a while since it, it you've been, been on the show. So, but you know what? I, I want to have it laid out here for us so well, we can see because when, that screen's going to be gone here in well, a second. When you say you're helping me, you act like I was ever good to start with. Like I, I can. <laughs> when you're at the bottom, you can only get better, right? Uh, well, you're going to get better today. <laughs> I don't know that I've ever hit the podium on my podium picks. Pretty tough this year, that's for sure, with so many to choose from. But we're going to go down here and hear from Lurch here shortly and see if uh, he can get a hold of Dungey, who was our fastest qualifier there. There he goes. Let's hear what uh, the Diesel has to say. Let's He's go right good. Well, ladies and gentlemen, what a good round and qualifying round. Number two, 47.4 for the Red Bull KTM. Number five of Ryan Dungey. Incredible run there. Got it done in the second one. First gate pick uh, when it comes to that second uh, heat. Yeah, no, it's uh, good. You know, we a couple changes throughout the, the day with practice, but... Uh, that, uh, that felt good, you know, the track's really kind of torn down, so race conditions, so I'm, I'm really happy with it, but uh, it all starts with the nice show, but this this first pick obviously helps for uh, for the heat. You know, when you talk about it, uh, Marvin Moosegan, I think he went 47-3, so you guys, a as a team, very close, fast qualifiers. Yeah, I know those 250s are going pretty fast these days, and track deteriorates a lot as we get out there after them, but uh, no disrespect taken, those guys are uh, going fast. You know, what, what's it like during the week for you guys? You guys actually get to practice together, talk over stuff. I know he's always watching the 450 qualifying, standing over there, maybe to get some tips or, or maybe fill you in. And that's a good thing about being teammates with such a, a world-class athlete. Yeah, I mean, with uh, me and Marvin, we get to ride together during the week as well as Anderson, and we get to push each other. You know, whether we're 450s or 250s, you know, it all it all is the same, and that pressure is what we all need. So uh, Marvin, he's done an exceptional job, and uh, but this track's going to be tricky tonight. It's going to be tough. We're going to have to be on top of our game, and uh, it's uh, it's good, though. The dirt's awesome. They've done a good job with the track layout. Well, ladies and gentlemen, let's give it up for the Red Bull KTM, your fastest qualifier of today. It's Ryan Dungey. Thanks a lot, Lurch. Hey, welcome back, folks. We're up here. Uh, Jim Holly, Kevin Windham, uh, Andy Boyer here, uh, Edward Jones Dome, Edward Jones Dome. But uh, we have a lot coming up, including our picks. I saw Kevin's uh, writing them down. Getting ready a long for it. day for us, I buddy. know, I yeah. know. He, he started out on the podium picks, yeah. but I started thinking it's time for me to start jotting a little information <laughs> yeah, you down. Can jot it down. And no cheating today, all right? Hey, I, I want <laughs> to ask at, you, Kevin. Don't look at my papers. No, <laughs> when, uh, you, you know, with Ryan Dungey, 
you know, finishing up. Marvin Moose can have the faster time, their teammates. And, and I know that's happened with you guys at the Geico Honda team. Does that bother him or no? That he didn't well, have fast as a, his 250 was faster than me today? There's there's two things uh, I heard him say, and he talked about, you know, no disrespect uh, right. r taken or, or whatever. So I don't know if he felt like Lurch was trying to disrespect <laughs> him as being the, the 450, uh, you know, elder statesman of the bunch. And, uh, you know, that, that was one of the things I picked up on. And then also talking about track deterioration. Right. So uh, we're, we're up here, and it looks a little bit different here. I don't know truly how much it, it uh, you know, is deteriorating, but the fact that he felt the need to comment on it and, and, and carry it on. And, right. you know, I, I think that kind of might weigh in his mind a little bit. I, I don't know. You know, it's, it's, it's hard to really see where he's going with that. Um, and, and it's hard to see. I mean, obviously, they don't, they're don't they not racing. They don't have to keep compete together, but we are racers. Right. They are racers. He always wants to win, and I, I, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's interesting to see. Well, know? it's all going to play into our picks. See, we have a word you, from you, our sponsors coming up you, here. You We're going to get to that, but you know, picks are coming. Well, yeah, the picks are coming. That's why I was having Kevin get into that, So, because I was thinking of my picks. He's got them <laughs> hidden there. Let's go to commercial break. Welcome back to the Edward Jones Dome. And uh, it's about that time of the show. We have a couple more questions here that we're going to answer for you guys. But the picks are coming up. Um, so the questions are coming up here. We're going to – here we go right there. Kevin, here we go. How good will Marvin be in the 450 class? That's a good question. Yeah, great question. Yeah, and I think his style is probably such that it, it should make the, the transition pretty smooth for him. I mean, I think that uh, he rides within his limits, but yet he's – I mean, looks – fabulous at posting yeah. the fastest time here today on the lights bike and if any style i think can adapt to the bigger horsepower quicker it would probably that be that of marvin's cool do you see him winning a race next year maybe absolutely yeah i mean you know it's so many moving parts to win a race and you know we get into uh early in the season when when everybody's there uh, yeah. you know it, it and just mentally making that that prep yeah. because As regardless that you're you're posting you know the fastest time here you know that when you step up to that class it's just just a different environment. <laughs> well, it, it truly the, is. The reason why I say, and, and the win won't come in, in the early half because he's never really ridden the West Coast. He, he likes the East Coast. He's right. been here. He feels comfortable. His win, if, if it comes next year, I, I think will be on a, a East Coast track, something he's familiar with. And uh, But, yeah, I think he'll get a win next yeah, year. Yeah, definitely. Another one for you, Kevin, from uh, Kurt yeah. Binky. <laughs> will my picks be better than y'all's? That's, that's what he says, yeah. N never. I don't it's know. Not, it's not, not even possible. Like, I, I essentially could miss the entire podium. I, I've done that before. I, for tonight I feel pretty pretty good about my picks, but I have missed the entire box. All right, well, I know Kurt Binky, his picks already. He's going with the o orange guys again to win. Uh, he's going to well, go with Marvin, and he's going to go with Dungey who, who, to win. Who can, you know. Yeah, I mean, who can argue with who that? Who can argue? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to go a little bit different, but uh, uh, who, who, let's start it out go with ahead, the two brothers. Well, you, you, you know what? I mean, how many times? Can you want to go last? It doesn't really matter. I what mean, mine are written down already. So, you know, one of my picks is going to be Sealy just because, you know, yeah. nothing but love for the 14. Right, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, uh, he's on a roll right now. He had a podium it, last it, week. And I'm going to I'm going to base it. <laughs> look, you want to know how bad my p podium picks are? I'm basing this off of in Supercross how many times can a team dominate a night? The Geico Honda team did it last weekend, right. but for, what, three weekends prior to that? Was it yeah. three yeah, in a yeah, row? Three yeah. in a row for the, KTM. Yeah, Red Bull KTM dominated. So I, I have to take Marvin as the stronger one of the bunch right now against this competition. I'm going to go uh, Eli, and then I'm going to go Dungey, and I'm going to go oh. Sealy for the 450. I know we okay. don't want to do 250 first, but I was on the uh, – That's cool. All right. All right. You got yours written down? I do. I do. All right, go, because I didn't write mine down yet, so I'm going to go. You go, and I'll, I'll write down my. I script. think Ryan Dungey's going to get it done, and uh, I'm going to, you know, back Kevin up with Sealy. I'm going to put Sealy second, and this I'm, I'm stepping out on a limb here, but I think Chad Reed has got something left in him, and I think he's going to vie for this podium. He hasn't been fast in qualifying today, but Dungey, Sealy, and Chad Reed are my 450 well, picks. Well, what did you do with Eli in that? I don't know. You know, he he's been so inconsistent this year. <laughs> and, you know, he won in Phoenix and then fell off the radar. So then he won gotcha. last weekend, and I don't know. You know, he's, he's been fast, but. Good points. Inconsistent. There you right. go. Mine for the 250, I got to go with Marvin Muskin. I, I whoa, think whoa, that. Wait, 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 wait. wait, wait, wait. We got to go back. We're on 450, 450. bro. Oh, well, you, you didn't do the 250? No, no, we're all talking 450s now. 450s? Just, just, just oh, stick with okay. it. Okay, all right. So, so I'm, I'm just going to go with the 450 then? For now. Right now. For now. For now. Okay. Yeah, right. we're doing well, it a little backwards sometime all right. here. Well, that's why, you know, I'm a I'm an old guy, Kevin. You know, I'm well, almost we do 55. It I'm, Long day. I'm a creature of habit. We normally do the We do. I messed this up. That's okay. Don't right. let me back next week. All right, weekend. here we go. This is what I'm going to go. I'm going to go with Eli Tomac to win back-to-back -back wins for him. He won Copy. last week. I think he's going to win. I, I just think that. 
and, and that all hinges on the fact that if he gets a good start, right? Yeah, if he's buried back in the pack, I don't, you know, tenth. I know he's fast, yeah. but he's got to get up there with Dungey. I think Dungey will lead this thing, but I think if Eli's pressure, I think Dungey's just going to say, you know what, I'm okay. I, I don't need to fall down. I don't need to get hurt. I'll, I'll, I'm okay with the second, so I'm going to go with Tomac, Dungey in that uh, second spot, and I'm going to go with Sealy. I, I think hey. that Sealy's. Uh, so that's look, what you I'm, went with. I'm, I looking, at, I'm looking at Colleen in the back, and she feels like the teacher whenever, you know, you and I sit next to each other in right, class and right. we have the same grades, and yeah. she, she's like, we're trying to we're tell cheap. her we didn't cheat. Yeah, she, yeah. She's not buying it. You know I saw you nickname? look at my picks, <laughs> and they wound up being the same on your paper. You, you know you know what we call – we got a new nickname for Colleen. Do you really? Stretch Kessler. Yeah. Stretch Kessler. <laughs> I like it. I do too. Just as long as she's keeping you guys in line. So, all right, let's, let's go to Absolutely. 250. Y'all ready? Right. 250. Go ahead, brother. Uh, Lead it off. Well, Lead I'm going to go with Marvin because, you know, that was my whole premise on going with uh, Eli, oh. although he's certainly capable. I just don't think that the, the KTMs are going to dominate tonight. I'm gonna, but I am going to put uh, Marvin and, uh, you know, Martin, staying with the M's. Martin okay. looked incredible, carrying some aggressive. corner speed and stuff, super aggressive, and then Bogle running out the uh, podium. All right, I'm going to go with the 250. I'm going to go with Marvin uh, to win. I think that he's just – I think he's upset. He lost that three points last week. I think he really wants to have a 16-point lead, if not more, going into the last round in East Rutherford. I'm going to put Bogle in second. I'm going to put Martin in third. The reason why I'm going with Martin in third is I just – you know, I saw him make too many mistakes out yep. there. He was – he has corner speed was fast, but he made a lot of mistakes. You're right. In the whoops, he's really – blit. he's kind of yeah. got out of shape, and I'm just thinking that – you know, if he gets out of shape a little bit during that main event, that he might just say, you know what, I'm not going to, I'm right. okay with the podium, and uh, I'll take a weekend off, and I'll see you in New York. Sure. Okay. I'm going to go with Marvin as well. Uh, from what I've seen today in qualifying, wow, you know, he's on top of it. He's been super fast. Second place, I think, is going to be Jeremy Martin. Again, Kevin, I, I agree with you. Super aggressive today. Looks good in his corners. Looks comfortable. The whoops aren't very big, so yeah. he's going to be fast. And third, I think, is going to be Joey Savacci. It's weird leaving Bogle, Bogle off the podium, but wow. uh, I think Savacci's, you know, he's been fast. And he podiumed last weekend. And, and he looks good today. He looks I mean, really that, good. That's a very good choice. Do you have something against the, the Geico Honda oh, program? Man, I mean, they are, they are both <laughs> <laughs> in the cheap seats today, like fourth or, or, or worse. Hey, man, it, it is a little bit you know, weird looking at my picks, being that no, they I'm swept the, they swept last weekend. Yeah, but well, you there know, you go. It's, St. Louis has a penchant for producing crazy main events, and, and a lot of weird things happen here, you know, as we've seen throughout the years. So, you know, we could all be blown out of the water, and they could all be replaced with, with three different guys in, in both classes. Maybe not so much in the 250, but that 450, we don't know what's going to happen. Well, with Anderson finishing up uh, third in that last time practice, I mean, he was but. Also, the other thing I want to transition over to that yeah. 250, Vicky Golden unable to uh, Bummer. make history here tonight in St. Louis. We'll have to take a weekend off, and we'll see if she can make history in East Rutherford, New Jersey. But clocked in with a, a 57.226. That was 48 fastest. Uh, they take the top uh, 40 going in, so uh, she'll have some time to work on it on Easter weekend, and we'll see her back then. And we got another question for you, Kevin. There you go. Let's see. Coming back Scott. to join us in New Jersey, man. I don't know yet because I tell you, I, I miss being at Supercross so much, but I've been able to enjoy uh, some, some really tremendous things with my kids. I mean, they range from 5 to 12 now. They're in. Uh, You're busy. My, my son's playing baseball and uh, doing track and field and stuff. Yes, baseball. So, yeah. Get that so scholarship. I, I hope to, but, but I tell you what, the coverage is so great that, uh, I mean, coming to a live event, if you, if you haven't done it, I mean, especially the New York round, it's just awesome to be a, be a part of our, our New Jersey. Um, yeah. But to watch the coverage at home and, and be a part of that has <laughs> been, been pretty awesome too. You guys are doing an awesome job Thank and, you. and uh, from, from all points of, of covering this, this uh, race through the night program. Love watching it on the couch and uh, <laughs> so we'll see. But I, I, I love being here and, and, and now being in St. Louis is awesome. So, What position is he playing? Well, right now he's playing second, but he's in, his he's in his first uh, first year coach's pitch. So he do, uh, we're sharpening the skills a little bit, but me being a coach in a stick and ball sport is kind of – comical because uh you know all i know is uh, dirt bikes and and ripping that up that's all i've ever done but but it's absolutely fun for you to go watch oh yeah different yeah and, and be with your son see, I just mean. just to see him doing anything they enjoy yeah. i mean whether we're riding dirt bikes or uh, playing ball yeah wait till he gets a little old and you build a batting cage in your backyard yeah, and you i go can see that, that coming <laughs> yeah Motor, motorcycles aren't the most expensive sport by the way i mean they got some no. parents pumping some serious dough in these basketball courts and and, and uh you know fields and all that stuff so yeah. 
Well, uh, folks, we hope you've enjoyed the show today. We had a little bit of trouble at the beginning, but wow, what a guest list. Kevin Windham himself was here, Chuck's son, Andrew Short, Jim, James Dakotas, Jeff Ward, Denny Stevenson. What a guest list. You know, and it's just an honor to be here again. Round 13 here in St. Louis. We don't know what's going to happen tonight. It's going to be a great show on Fox Sports 1. want to thank all of our sponsors, Yamaha, MMI, DC Shoes, Amsoil. Thank you for being a part of our program. Don't forget tonight, ladies and gentlemen, St. Louis, round 13, Fox Sports 1. And don't forget, we got next weekend off, but we're in Houston in we're two back weeks. In Houston. We'll pick up that West Coast. That's That'll right. That'll be interesting.